You know what that sound means. It's time for Wildcat Football on Light Tube Sports Network. With Scott Chasteen and Ken Keller. From the very first snap to the very last. One team, one school, one community. It's game time. Let's go. Well, I hope it'll be a great environment, number one. Uh, the type of environments that make memories for the young men that play the sport of football here in southern middle Tennessee. Um, you know, and that's part of it. You've got to be able to handle the environment first. And then uh, once you uh, settle in, then you have to handle your opponent who uh, is a very inspired opponent, which makes it into a rivalry game. And um, that's, you know, your focus is trying to keep your players sharp, focused, and, um, and not let them burn up way too much energy in pregame. You just want to... Uh, keep everything rolling, but uh, you can't help but get swept up in the environment. Well, I think uh, taking care of the football, number one. Uh, our offensive line obviously is the uh, cornerstone to our football team on the offensive side. Uh, but uh, we need to protect the football. We had three turnovers against Shelbyville. Uh, all three of them deep in their territory, uh, which means that we took points off the board. Uh, we need to make sure that we do not do that again this week. Well, you don't want to give up the big shot plays. That's a given. Uh, I think the other thing is is whether we can uh, prevent Coffee County from running in between the tackles. They like to pride themselves on being able to run the ball on the inside. And, uh, you know, uh, it's a challenge to our defensive line, but uh, they responded well last week. I expect them to respond well again this week. Well, you, we tell our players, you know, don't get caught up in all the social media stuff. Uh, you know, don't let anybody get underneath your skin. Don't respond back, et cetera. Uh, you just got to gotta go about it in a businesslike attitude, and you got to have a little maturity about you, and... Uh, Hopefully uh, our young men are doing that. Uh, we just hope that it's a great uh, atmosphere. The weather is awesome, I hope, and uh, I hope Telehoma fans will enjoy uh, going over to Manchester and uh, see if we can't come back with a victory. Welcome to Cardin Gerald Field, Manchester, Tennessee. Tonight it's the 96th coffee pot game between the Tullahoma Wildcats, and the Coffee County Red Raiders. Good evening, everyone. I'm Scott Shasteen, along with Ken Keller, and we will bring you all the action tonight right here on Light Tube Channel 23 and 93.9 The Duck. Tullahoma has won four in a row of these coffee pot games. They've played 95 times. Tullahoma's won 62. Coffee County's won 31. And there have been two ties. They did not play in 1943 and 1944. Ken, last couple of years, Tullahoma's owned this game. Oh, no doubt about it. Last year's game uh, was very competitive in the first half. Really changed uh, on a kickoff return for Tullahoma with 50 seconds to go that uh, Tullahoma had a 14-7 halftime lead. Blew them out in the second half. Tullahoma Wildcats coming off a 28-14 win over Shelbyville last week, Coffee County coming off a 21-14 win over Franklin County. How much do you think we learned from those games? Well, you know, both teams got their feet wet. They went on the road, uh, you know, against uh, rivals. And, uh, you know, look, 1-0 is better than 0-1. <laughs> Everybody wants to be 1-0. That's right. Everybody Coffee wants County. to be 1-0. Ran the ball 30 times last week against Franklin County. They basically ran out the second half, but Franklin County turned the football over. Otherwise, Coffee County really didn't provide a lot of offense. Yeah, you know, Coffee County had scored on the third play of that game on a long bomb, had a 14, built a 14 to zip halftime lead, but had to get a last minute interception to hold the Rebels off and win 21 to 14. Tullahoma, on the other hand, uh, started out strong. 
but uh, Shelbyville tied it up 14-14 with a long drive to start the second half, and we thought Tullahoma's defense was sort of pooped, but uh, the Wildcats held the Golden Eagles scoreless the rest of the way. Well, they sure did, and give Coy C.S., uh, defensive coordinator, and the defense credit. They locked them down, and really a pivotal play was, a, again, a special teams play in the third quarter uh, changed the momentum in favor of the Tullahoma Wildcats, and they went it 28-14. to we're about seven minutes away from kickoff here. Our camera operator and producer on site is Chris Barstad. Yeah, he does a great job for us. Ken, let's take a look at your keys to victory tonight for the Wildcats. As always, I have three. Going to be real easy for Wildcat fans to remember this acronym, THS. Number one, T, Trench Warfare. Both offensive lines have earned nicknames, the Pancake Posse, versus the War Pigs. Coach Olive knows that rivalry games are won in the trenches and the veteran ball coach will pour a physical flavor of syrup on his pancake posse unit tonight. Number two, H, highlight special teams plays. Last year's game turned on a Wildcat kickoff return touchdown only 50 seconds before halftime to break a tie game. The play seized momentum going into halftime, and the Cats romped in the second half, turning a 14-7 lead into a 48-13 laugher. And number three, S, shrink the turnovers. Tell Oma quarterback Ryan Scott suffered three turnovers last week in game one. Scott must take better care of the pigskin tonight in a hostile environment to help his team avoid a Coffee County upset in the coffee pot to the Red Raiders. The Wildcats and the Red Raiders are poised to take the field. The captains are on their respective sidelines. We'll take our pregame break and come back. You're listening and watching Telehoma Wildcat football on the Light Tube Sports Network. Dentistry understands you never get a second chance to make a good first impression, and your smile is an important part of that impression. That's why they put together the most experienced, friendly, and professional staff. Add to that the most sophisticated diagnostic and treatment technology available. The result is a winning smile so powerful you could break ice with it. Visit the smile experts at Glickenwood's Family Dentistry and let your smile be the first thing people notice about you. Glickenwoods Family Dentistry, glickenwoods.com, or find them on Facebook. Welcome back to Cardin Gerald Field in Manchester, Tennessee. It's the coffee pot. And here come the cats. It's football time in Tullahoma. Uh, we have got a great crowd on hand tonight. The Tullahoma side is absolutely packed. The Coffee County side continues to filter in here. Cardin Gerald Field just off Interstate 24, exit 111, Manchester, Tennessee. Along with Ken Keller and Chris Barstad, I'm Scott Shastine. We're just moments away from kickoff. Got to have the coin toss first. Ken, let's talk a little bit about senior quarterback Connor Shemwell. Tore his ACL in basketball last year. Came back, played well last week. Had a big 75-yard touchdown pass early in the game, got the Red Raiders on top. They played with the lead the rest of the way. What kind of mobility can we expect from Shimwell? You know, that's a great question because he's definitely going to be tested by that Tullahoma defense. You know, Mr. Shimwell, three-sport athlete, uh, was a, a region uh, three six a all-region player last year in 2020, but he's coming off ACL surgery only five months ago on the basketball hardwood. Tullahoma's captains are number three, Joe Duncan, number 23, Will Parton, number 56, Caden Bradford, and number 20, Colton Proctor. Captains are out in the middle of the field. Again, this game is part of the Great American Rivalry Series sponsored by the United States Marines. Yeah, and, and I mean, what a great atmosphere for a football game, Scott. You know, we have the, the – the blown up football and the Army man in the end zone, the Marine in the in the Great American Rivalry Series in the end zone, and then this pretty impressive jumbotron new to uh, Coffee County this year. Nice new jumbotron they've got here in Manchester. As we wait for the coin toss, the crowd continues to just file in. Huge crowd here for the coffee pot and Coffee County having some. COVID issues as a school system, Ken, shutting down, shutting down next week. But uh, 
Really important to get this game in tonight for the teams and for the fans. Oh, no doubt about it. And, you, you know, you did mention it is part of the Great American Rivalry Series. And so uh, they did award scholar athletes before the game. Tullahoma's representative, he's out there as a captain tonight, number 23, Will Parton. And for Coffee County, the aforementioned quarterback, uh, three-sport athlete, Connor Shimwell for Coffee County. So Tullahoma has won the toss. And the Wildcats have elected to receive the football first. That usually works out pretty well for Tullahoma. Well, it certainly did last year. You know, we didn't score our first offensive series last week, but last year it's bad news to kick the ball off to Tullahoma. Coffee County will do just that. The Wildcats are in their white uniforms with cardinal helmets and cardinal numbers, black trim. Coffee County in their red jerseys with red helmets and gray football britches. We're just about set to go. Tullahoma will move left to right here in this first quarter. The coffee pot, number 96. You know what, uh, you know, what constitutes a rivalry? You know, I, I think fan passion, game day atmosphere, spirit between the schools and its students, and certainly competitive football games. And, you know, just four years ago, Scott, on this field, witnessed one of the best high school games I've ever seen, 42-41 Tullahoma win. Uh, in the series, probably one of, of my favorites. The highest scoring coffee pot game in history. A lot of, lot of uh, non-region games going on tonight. Uh, White County and Warren County is not one of them. Warren County had to, um, they don't forfeit. It's a no contest because of COVID, so White County gets that win. Chattanooga, uh, Franklin County not playing tonight. Shelbyville at Marshall County. Creekwood at Fairview. Lawrence County plays at Loretto, Nolansville at Giles County, Cascade at Cannon County, Houston County at Eagleville, Moore County plays at Bledsoe County, Coffee County set to kick it off, kicking off for the Red Raiders, number 48, Elijah McCoy. And we want to wish Raymond and Janice Welch a very happy 60th anniversary today. Happy anniversary to the Welches. How about that? 60th anniversary. Where do you spend your 60th anniversary? Why you spend it at the greatest rivalry, Coffee County and Tullahoma. Well, you e you're either here or you're watching on Light 2, that's, Channel 23. That's right. Tullahoma and Coffee County set to go. And there's the Red Raider kick taken by Joe Duncan. And there's a whistle and a flag on the play. First play. Maybe the referees weren't set. I really don't see a flag. We are a little bit different than normal as you view this on Light Tube Channel 23. We're on the visitor's side. Coffee County has two press boxes, so we get to sit in the visitor's side. A little bit different view for uh, the fans as they watch from the visitor's side and for us as we broadcast. The officials turn away to the other side when they make their calls, so it can sometimes be difficult to pick up penalty calls, but we'll do our best. As Coffee County will kick it off again, now we're set to go, and there's the kick. It's a low line drive. Duncan's going to let it go into the end zone, so Tullahoma will begin its first drive at the 20-yard line. Yeah, thoughts and prayers are definitely with the Duncan family. Uh, Joe courageously playing with a heavy heart. His uncle passed away this week, uh, Mr. Tim Lusk. So uh, we want to remember the Lusk and the Duncan families Absolutely. during this time. So Tullahoma will line it up first. Ryan Scott is the quarterback. Keyshawn Cummings the tailback. Your receivers are Malik Grizzard, Brody Melton, Jacob Dixon, and Joe Duncan. Across the line, Caden Bradford. Logan Crouch, Ian Poe, J.T. Taylor, and Zach Swigger. Scott, back to throw, pass for Jacob Duncan is complete at the 25, mark it at the 26, a gain of six. Yeah, Dixon had an excellent game. You know, he's, uh, you know, one game last year I said it seems like he has stick him on his hands because if he gets his hands on it, he's going to bring it in. Nice, uh, nice catch there just off the ground, a low throw there. So uh, good job by Dixon on that one. Second down and four Wildcats at the Tullahoma 26. H-back is in on the left side. Cummings lined up to Ryan Scott's right, and Cummings will get it. Straight up the middle, big hole. Cummings 35.
Cummings 40. Keyshawn Cummings to the 42-yard line. That's a wildcat first down. My goodness, that diesel is trucking number three. Ian Weldon hit him, and he's no small man himself. Six foot three safety. Uh, Cummings averaged 19.9 yards per rush last week. 16 yards on the carry from Keyshawn Tullahoma at the 42. Cummings again over the 45. Cummings keeps pushing, powering his way out to the 48, a gain of six. Yeah, Tullahoma had some big chunk plays last week. Uh, one of Cummings' touchdown was a 47-yard run. Call it a gain of seven, second down and three. Tullahoma going pretty fast here at the Wildcat 49-yard line. As we have played a minute and 15 seconds, no score here at Cardin Gerald Field. Cats line it up, two receivers to the left, two to the right. Scott, little screen pass to Dixon, complete at the 50. Jacob to the 45. Dixon down to the 41-yard line. That's a Wildcat first down. Well, that play certainly worked last week in game one versus Chevyville. Jacob Dixon had seven catches for 84 yards, a 12 yards uh, per catch average against the Golden Eagles. Ten-yard gain for the Wildcats. They'll line it up at the Coffee County 41 with three receivers to the right, one to the left. Scott, straight drop. Scott's got it all day. Scott's going long down the middle of the field for Brody Melton. That pass incomplete. Melton double covered there, got his hands on it, couldn't cradle it in. Yeah, just a play action pass down the middle. He was looking for Melton all the way. So Teloma comes out, balanced offense, two passes, two runs, and then a long deep pass down the middle. Pass a little short, but probably good because they had two defenders right on Melton that time. So the Cats will line it up second and 10 at the Coffee County 41 with two receivers to the right and the H back in on that right side. Handoff, Jackson, no, that's Cummings, and Cummings didn't get much, maybe two, maybe a yard. It's third down and nine, Wildcats. Yeah, much better job there by the Red Raider defense, Ashton Farrell with the hit, linebacker 6'1", 215. Well, Tullahoma facing its first third down of the night at the Coffee County 40 with 9.40 left to go in a scoreless first quarter. Cats split three to the right, one to the left. Cummings on the left side of Ryan Scott. Scott to throw, pass complete on the far sideline to Chris Usselton down to the 30 five-yard line, it's fourth down. Well, I believe that's Usselton's first appearance on offense this year. He did play cornerback in the second half and do a very effective job at Shebbeville last week. So uh, this is his first year playing football. It's good to see him uh, get into action at wide receiver. Fourth down and four Wildcats at the Coffee County 35. Tullahoma is going for it here on fourth and four. Maybe try to draw them off sides. Again, that H-back lines up on the right side. And here's the Keeper by Ryan Scott, and Scott is going to be tackled short of the first down marker. He got a yard or two, but that's all well played by Coffee County. Yeah, so he faked the handoff to Cummings. Cummings goes around right tackle without the ball on the fake, but Coffee County diagnosed that play well and stops Tullahoma on fourth down. So the Wildcats march from their own 20 to the Coffee County 33, but uh, the Red Raiders get the stop, and they'll take over. For their first possession, 8.47 left to go. No score here in the first quarter. See how the Red Raiders line up. Shimwell is the cornerback. The running back is Connor Heaton, number 22. Red Raiders split two receivers to the left. Heaton fumbled the football. It's on the ground. I think Coffee County got it back. No gain on the play. Well, it's a game of nerves, big rivalry, big, probably the biggest game you're going to play of the season uh, from, from certainly Coffee County side. So that running back fumbled the ball. He had a good game last week against Franklin County. He carried it 29 times, did Connor Heaton. Kind of a sloppy handoff from Shimwell to Heaton. Yeah. Coffee County now second and 10. They split two receivers to the left, two to the right. Shimwell back to throw. Pass over the middles, open and complete at the 45-yard line. That's a first down, Coffee County. Yeah, that was a nice catch. That one was hauled in. Jalen Osborne. Osborne. Boy, now Osborne's a big target, Scott. 6'4", 215. Osborne caught a touchdown last week versus Franklin County. Gain of 13 on the 
quick slant for Coffee County. They're out to their 46 yard line, first down and 10. Shimwell to Heat. Heaton cuts it back inside, and Heaton picks up two. Yeah, Heaton rushed for 137 yards last week, so they did lean on him very heavily. You know, as we mentioned in pregame, Shimwell coming off ACL injury in basketball only five months ago, so you got to give that young man credit, working hard to, to rehab his injury and be back tonight. 7.30 left to go in the first quarter. We are scoreless here at Coffee County High. Carden Gerald Field pass over the middle once again. It's Osborne complete at the 44 yard line of Tullahoma. That's another Coffee County first down. Yeah, nice little slant pattern. I tell you, Shimwell set his feet on that big 6 3 in the pocket. He fired a laser to okay. the Coffee County receiver on that right on the numbers. They needed eight, they got eight. First down, Red Raiders at the Wildcat 44. Coffee County on the march. We're scoreless with seven minutes left to go in the first quarter. Shimwell, keeper. Shimwell straight up the gut, inside the 40 to the 39 goes Connor Shimwell, a gain of five. Well, last week that's the exact play that uh, really gutted us up the middle. They, the fake handoff to the running back and quarterback just right up the gut. So, guess they saw some tape on us. We've uh, got to find a way I to I suspect they down. watched the tape Certainly of the game. So, yeah. yeah, that play definitely worked against us. Last Second week. and five, Coffee County at the Tullahoma 39. Osborne in the slot on the right side. Shemwell has Heaton to his left. He hands it to Heaton, and Heaton is introduced to Tullahoma defensive tackle Jaden Taylor, JT, on the stop. Yeah, JT wrapped him up, did a good job on that one. Minimal yardage. Heaton is down to the 38, so a gain of one. Third down and four, Coffee County. Their first third down of the night. Red Raiders split three receivers to the right. Osborne is the closest one to the quarterback. Empty backfield for Connor Shemwell. Shemwell, here comes the pressure. Over the middle, Osborne again, complete at the Tullahoma 29. That's another Red Raider first down, but there's a flag on the play. Well, definitely Osborne, his preferred target. That's three catches if this one stands. Well, they found a hole in that Tullahoma defense. And they are exploiting it. Yeah, the timing between those two is on. So the call on the field is illegal motion again, or illegal substitution against Coffee County. So that play will not count. So the five-yard penalty brings up third and nine. Big penalty for the Red Raiders. Third down and nine now at the Tullahoma 43. In a scoreless first quarter, 547 left to go. Coffee County's had the ball for three minutes. They have it third and nine at the Tullahoma 43. Shimwell. Back to throw. Shimwell's got a lot of time over the middle. Pass is tipped incomplete. Intended for Travis Martin. And there's a flag on the play. We may get a pass interference here. Will Parton on the coverage, covering Travis Martin on that one. Martin has good speed. He's dangerous in the open field. Didn't really see contact there, Ken, but it is pass interference against Tullahoma. I agree with you. He was behind the play. He looked like minimal. Looked like he made a good tip away on that, defended it well, but the call goes Coffee County's way. So the first, a big penalty here. Coffee County gets a break on third down and nine. So why aren't they moving the football? It's because it was, I'm confused. Okay, now they're marching off the penalty. It'll be inside the 30 to the 28. That's where Coffee County will have it. First down and 10 at the Tullahoma 28-yard line. So, aided by a 15-yard penalty, the Red Raiders inside the 30, threatening to jump on top here. Two receivers to the right, two to the left. Osborne in the slot on the left side. Shimwell to throw. That pass to Osborne is complete. Osborne down to the 22-yard line, a gain of six. Yeah, Osborne juggled the ball and then brought it in. So a nice catch, nice concentration by Shimwell. Dixon on the coverage. Pretty good coverage. Shimwell's just putting the ball on target early. 
He is putting it on target. Been very uh, efficient. Mark it at the 23. So a gain of five, second and five. It's not very often you see a six foot four wide receiver at the high school level. That's pretty impressive size. Until a home has cover. one in Will Park. Three receivers to the right, one to the left for the Red Raiders. Shimwell to keep it around the right side. Shimwell lowers his head and gets inside the 20, short of the first down at the 19. Well, tough run there by Shimwell. So just keeping Tellahoma honest, both teams have showed balance on both drives. Tellahoma moved the ball, it sputtered out on a fourth down. They could convert. Coffee County inside Tellahoma's 20 on their first drive. Third and one, Red Raiders at the 19. No score here, 420, 420 left to go in the first quarter. Osborne on the right slot. He has been the main target. Shimwell to Heaton. Heaton falls forward. Did he get the first down? I don't think so. You got a nice, uh, nice pinch there by the interior lineman on, on the Telema Wildcat defensive line. No gain on the play. It's fourth and one Red Raiders at the Wildcat 19-yard line. Coffee County, a lot of substitution here. As they are going power set all the way, Ken. Look at this. Yes, they are. They got all kind of people in the backfield. Shimwell's just going to take the quarterback sneak. Ball is loose. Tullahoma says they've got it. Coffee County says, no, we got the first down. Let's see what the referee says. Shimwell ran it just straight up the gut. I think they're short. I think we stopped them. And the call on the field, is, oh, yeah, that's short. Oh, they're going to get a measurement here, stop the clock for a measurement. Yeah. That looks short from here. 327 to go. Still looks like it's at the 19-yard line, but a measurement will come our way. So, Ken, so far, Coffee County's offensive line, Done a good yeah. job of protecting Connor Shimwell. And as you said, Shimwell's been on the mark. Yeah, quick timing patterns, not giving Tellahoma's defense time to get back on him. So uh, he's sitting in the pocket getting rid of the ball quick. Tellahoma does indeed stop him. Cats hold on fourth down, and the Red Raiders are stopped. So both teams go for it on fourth down and short, and both teams are stopped. And both quarterbacks were stopped. So both teams elect to rush their quarterbacks on fourth and short and defensive, both defensive stuff the quarterback. So Coffee County uses five minutes even. Nope, five minutes and 20 seconds off the clock from 847 to 327. But it's for naught as the Wildcats will have it. First down and 10 at the Tullahoma 19. Coffee County lines up in a 3-3-5 three, three, kind of defensive set. Three down linemen, three linebackers. Scott Cummings, Keyshawn's looking for a hole. He can't find one. Stop for no gain. Yeah, nice job by the defensive line. Short gain there for Cummings. And, uh, you know, this is a young man that came into this game averaging nearly 20 yards per rush. Yeah, he got nothing. Second and 10, Wildcats at the 19. So Tullahoma will split two receivers to the left, two to the right on second and 10. Beautiful night here in southern middle Tennessee. High school football. Cummings tripped up at the line. Great play by Coffee County's Tristan Gailey, 5'9", 160 junior. It's third and long. Oh, you called it right there. Gailey just kind of, uh, you know, making the, making the play there from the linebacker spot. So. Good, good form tackle, hit him low, and took the big man out. Yeah, they've been coached to hit Keyshawn low. Yes, you can tell indeed. that. Gain of two. Third down and eight, Wildcats. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Melton comes in motion right to left. Ryan Scott, straight drop. Good protection, good protection. Scott got a man out in the flat. It's complete. That's Jackson, che that's Jackson Sheffield, and Sheffield spins his way out. To the 41 yard line. That's a Wildcat first down. Well, that play gets Tullahoma's fans loud and yelling. So nice play. He rolls out of the pocket, makes a good decision. Thought he's going to take off. The defender shed off. 
Sheffield, and so Thomas made the right – or Scott made the right – play on that one mainly by distributing the ball to Sheffield and getting the first down. Nice run after catch there by Sheffield. Gain of 20 yards on the pass from Ryan Scott to Jackson Sheffield. First down, Wildcats. Nice At third the Tullahoma 41. Yes, indeed. Catch. Third and nine. Cat split two receivers left. Stack two to the right. On first and ten, Scott. Screen pass, Dixon. Dixon. Got five, six, seven, eight, maybe nine yards for Jacob Dixon. Scott to Dixon. Excellent run after catch there by Dixon on the Telhoma sidelines, and he just uh, tight ropes it down for the first down right at the midfield mark. Spotted at midfield, a gain of nine. It's first down and ten for the Wildcats. Cats now, same set. Stacking those two receivers on the right. This time it's a handoff. Sheffield, Tullahoma, not much inside. Jackson got a yard, maybe two. Yeah, right now on the line of scrimmage, that uh, pancake posse is uh, getting pushed back by the front, I guess the front eight. What are they playing, a 3-5, 3-3-5, the front six. Stuffing the run pretty well right now. For Gain of one for Sheffield. Tullahoma second and nine at the Coffee County 49. 115 to go, scoreless first quarter. Scott, over the middle pass, Melton completed the 40 to the 35. Melton down to the 30 yard line of the Red Raiders. That's a Wildcat first down. Well, nice pass there by Ryan Scott. Number 75 for the Red Raiders was putting the heat right in his face and he stood in there and delivered an excellent pass. Brody Melton does the rest, big gronk. Gain Carries it down to the 20. Gain of 19. Tullahoma at the 30-yard line. First and 10. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Scott looks to his sideline. After the 19-yard gain on the pass to Brody Melton. Like what I'm seeing out of Ryan Scott tonight delivering the football. He's accurate with his passes early. Scott hands to Sheffield. Sheffield. Goes left first, then to the right. And Sheffield works his way down to the 25, a gain of five. That's definitely a positive run. You know, a couple series back when Tellahoma, before they converted the 39, it was a one-yard rush and then a no-gain rush. So they're getting a little push on the line now with uh, Sheffield now at running back. Second down and five Wildcats at the Red Raider 25 with 14 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Tellahoma does not have to run a play. But the Wildcats will. Scott to Sheffield. Sheffield, little gap there to the 20. And down to the 18 goes Jackson Sheffield. And that's a Wildcat first down. Excellent energy out of Jackson Sheffield. He's giving Tullahoma a little uh, a little spur here. The first quarter has come to a close. We are scoreless in the 96th Coffee Pot game. You're watching the Light Tube Sports Network. It's football time in Tennessee and nobody tackles the competition like the Russell Barnett Automotive family with six locations to serve you, certified collision center, over 1,000 new and pre-owned vehicles to choose from at russellbarnett.com, hometown auto rental, limited lifetime powertrain warranty on certain units, certified pre-owned units. Too many reasons to mention why I keep asking the question, why buy anywhere else? We have played one quarter here at Coffee County High, no, actually, Coffee County Middle School, Card and Gerald Field. No score. Ken, pretty even first quarter here. Yeah, no doubt. Both teams make fourth down stops on defense. Both offensive drove the ball, but got stopped on fourth down. Both quarterbacks accurate early, both Ryan Scott and Connor Shimwell. And I think Jackson Sheffield has is, is injected some energy into this Tellum offense uh, there late in the first quarter by making a 20 yard catch and making some good, nice inside tough runs as awesome. well. And Sheffield will remain the tailback. Chris Usselton is split wide to the right. Jacob Dixon, Joe Duncan wide left. First and 10 Wildcats at the Red Raider, 18. Scott surveys the field, brings Usselton in motion. Little shuffle pass to Chris Usselton. To the 15, to the 10, touchdown Wildcats. 18 yard pass from Ryan Scott to Chris Usselton. 
Ken, nobody came within five yards. Great blocking by Tullahoma. Oh, it sure was. And so we see Usselton getting to play offense this week. He's a great athlete, uh, played basketball, was uh, all district the last couple years. And I know Coach Olive and his staff excited to have him on this team this year in his first year of high school football as a senior. So Tullahoma lines up the swinging gate to attempt the point after. The snapper is Reagan Tomlin. The holder, Wade Collins, and the kicker, Justice Chadwick. There's the snap, the hold, the kick, and it's good. 11.51 left to go in the first half. Tullahoma 7, Coffee County nothing on the Light Tube Sports Network. As football is a tradition in our community, so is Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration. We were here then, we are here now, serving our community for over 45 years. Continue the winning combination, Stroop's Accurate Refrigeration for the win. Call 455-8757, the name you can trust. Tullahoma drives 81 yards in nine plays using three minutes and 36 seconds off the clock. The Wildcats score on an 18-yard pass, a little shuffle pass from Ryan Scott to Chris Usselton. Tullahoma jumps on top 7 to nothing, with 11.51 to go in the half. Well, it's always good to score first uh, in a rivalry game, especially on the road, and Tullahoma does that tonight. That was a play that Jacoby Thomas scored on lots of times last year. Justice Chadwick's kick is taken in the end zone. Touchback Wildcats. Coffee County will begin its second drive at its 20-yard line. So the Red Raiders, on uh, the first time they had the ball, drove from their 33 down to the Tullahoma 19, aided by a 15-yard pass interference penalty. That was bogus. Okay, I'll say yeah. it. Yeah. Caden Bradford, Cam Robinson on that line, Colton Proctor on that defensive line for Tullahoma, along with Zach Swigger, Swagger. 5'8", 240, a senior. The linebacker, Stroop, Painter, Tucker, Fouch is in there at cornerback. Parton and Stroop are the safeties. Usselton also a corner. Coffee County first and 10 at the 20. Shimwell to throw. Rolls left. Shimwell's pass is complete out to the 32-yard line. It's a first down, Coffee County. That catch was made there by 13. Well, Shamwell, good live arm, rolls out to his left, throws back across his body there and uh, delivers an, another accurate throw. So the catch made by 13, Travis Martin for Coffee County. Red Raiders have it first and 10 at their 32. 12 pa yard completion. Passing game has been on target. Yeah, not much in the run game, but yes, they are in the, in the passing game doing well. Shamwell. Hands it off. Man coming in to round. Got a little room at the 35. Cuts it back at the 40 and dropped there at the 39-yard line. That's 36 for Coffee County. That's Kelby Walker, 5'7", 145 senior. Oh, Travis Martin, some good downfield block in there on Chris Usselton around the 40-yard line. Helped him get a few extra yards on that one. So, you know, we see how well Tullahoma's wide receivers block. It's a key component in the run game or pass game as well, just uh, blocking by the wide receivers, helping their teammates out. Coffee County executed it on that play. Second down and two Red Raiders at the Coffee County 40. Shimwell to Heaton. Heaton stacked up in the line. He lost yardage. Great penetration by that Wildcat defense. Let's see which one of those big men's getting up off the bottom. That looks to me like 71 Cam Robinson. Oh, he blew through there that time. Big Cam did. They gave him you back to the it. line of scrimmage, oh, Ken. Man. He didn't get close to the yeah, line He of sure scrimmage. didn't. He lost a full yard on that. Big Cam hit him. So, uh, favorable spot there for the Red Raiders. No question in hay. Third and two, Coffee County at the Red Raider, 40. Ten minutes left to go in the half. Tullahoma leads seven to nothing. Osborne in motion. He went forward. This is not arena football. Pass is complete. Great catch by Osborne. Great tackle by Usselton, but it's a Coffee County first down. Yeah, it's not Canadian football. He may have took he was up going a forward. little bit early, but, uh, you know, a 
pass, you know, a, a third down conversion there for Coffee County. And to win big, tough rivalry games, you have to convert third down. So that's really going to be another key to this game is right now who's converting third and fourth downs. Coffee County splits Walker out to the right. Hustleton's on him. And Shimwell rolls that way. Shimwell looks long. His pass is incomplete. Well played there by Tullahoma's Owen Stroop, 5'9", 170 senior. Good technique, just reached up and knocked that ball oh, away. Martin was wide open. He was five yards behind Stroop. Shimwell put a little bit too much air on that, and if he led the receiver, they may have had a touchdown on that play. But nice recovery by Owen Stroop. The Tullahoma defensive back knocks it away. Second down and 10 Red Raiders at the Coffee County 43. Now that Coffee County side's full over there, Ken. Great crowd here. They've got to be – they're lined around the fence down there. There's got to be – I don't know what this place seats, but I'm going to guess four or 5,000 people here. Shimwell wants to throw. Shimwell over the middle, incomplete, broken up again by Stroop. And uh, that was intended for Osborne, and once again, put some air under that ball, Ken. It's a touchdown. Yeah, big Caden Bradford was right in his face, though. 56 was bringing the heat on that one, and just right in Shimwell's face mask. So, Shimwell would have had another second. It probably would have ended in good, uh, a good result for Coffee County, but that's what defensive line pressure can do for you. Tullahoma starting to get that pressure. Third down and 10, Red Raiders at their 43. Shimwell splits two receivers. Now one receiver to the left and three to the right. Osborne and Walker both on that right side. Shimwell to throw, looks that way, a little screen for Walker. Walker gets by one tackler, gets by a second, and Walker fights his way down to the Tullahoma wow. 46. That's a Coffee County first down. Well, a huge play there for the Coffee County offense. They needed that to stay on the field. They convert a third and 10. Kelby Walker caught that when he had a 75-yard catch for a touchdown the third play of the game against Franklin County last week. A 5'7", 145-pound receiver, Scott. He's short, but he's quick, and he juked out uh, Mr. Usselton on that play to get that first down. Nine minutes left to go here in the first half. Tullahoma leads 7 to nothing. Coffee County first down and 10 at the Wildcat 30, 46-yard line. Here's Heaton. Handoff Heaton, and Heaton got five. Well, that's a positive gain there until him his safety comes up and makes the, the hit there for the Wildcats. But when your safety's making tackles on run plays, that's not real good. So positive run there for Coffee County. They are mixing up, showing good balance. They had thrown several passes in a row and got to have some kind of run game, though, to supplement the passing game to keep telling his defense honest. Gain of four for Heaton. Second down and six Red Raiders at the Tullahoma 42. Shimwell hands it to Heaton. This time Heaton has nowhere to go, no gain on the play, third down. Yeah, tough sledding there for Mr. Heaton on that one. Wildcat defense collapses inside on him, not much room there, so that's going to set up another third down. They converted a third and 10 uh, the last time. It's third and seven right now. 7.50 left to go in the half. Cats lead it seven to nothing, third down and seven for Coffee County. Ball rest at the Tullahoma 43. Two receivers to the left, two to the right. Third and seven. Shimwell to throw. No pressure. Over the middle pass. Intercepted. Tullahoma at the 20. This is Stroop to the 25. Stroop slung out of bounds at the 35-yard line. It's a Wildcat first down. Humongous play there for Mr. Owen Stroop. Nice De defensive coverage over the middle. He reaches up with both arms, corrals it in for the Tullahoma interception. Big play there to stall this drive by Coffee County. So Coffee County once again on their second possession of the night, Ken, has a long – and Shimwell is down. Connor Shimwell is down on the field. And we will take a break. 7.24 to go in the half. Tullahoma leads Coffee County – Seven to nothing. This is the Light Tube Sports Network.
So Stroop intercepts Coffee County. Tullahoma maintains its seven to nothing lead. And the Wildcats have it first and 10 at their 35. Some excellent secondary work during that series, Kim, by Caleb Stroop. I mean, oh, Owen Stroop. No doubt about it. Uh, ball hawking defense, they have had tons of interceptions of the last uh, 15 games. Scott, quick pass to Dixon. Dixon breaks the tackle at the 40, and Jacob Dixon works his way out close to a first down. I tell you, that play just works against every team that we play. You know, quarterback Scott does a good job of getting that ball out quickly. Dixon with the sure hands, and he goes north with that football after he catches it. Ken, they had it at the 35. Dixon got to the 44. <laughs> That's nine yards, and it's a first down, Tullahoma. Am I wrong? No, you're, you're dead on. It was spotted right on the 35-yard line. Ryan Scott to throw. He looks for Dixon, a little pump fake. Scott wants to go long for Joe Duncan. That pass complete at the 20, 15, 10, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Give him six touchdown Wildcats. 56 yards on the pass for Ryan Scott to Joe Duncan. He got a step. He made the catch. He outran the defense. No, he sure did, and that's where that little screen pass Sets up fake. everything. Yeah. You know, pump fake. They fake the screen to Dixon. And then Joe Duncan just keeps tracking on the route. A beautiful pass. He runs under it and burns Blake Phillips of Coffee County for the touchdown. Duncan had a 41-yard TD last week. Big play, Joe Duncan. Big play. I like it, Joe Duncan. 59 yards. Tullahoma lines up the P-A-T. Snap, a little low. The hold was good. The kick is good. 7.06 to go. In the coffee pot, Cats 14, Red Raiders nothing. This is the Light Tube Sports Network. Whether it's a home loan, a business loan, a personal loan, a loan for any good reason, Citizens Tri-County Bank is here to help you with the loans you need. With caring, friendly, lending pros at convenient offices across Tullahoma, we love our community and we take pride in helping people get the loans they need. Citizens Tri-County Bank, focused on making loans for the individuals and businesses of our community. Tullahoma drives 65 yards on two plays. The touchdown coming on a 56-yard, let me try that again, a 56-yard touchdown pass from Ryan Scott to Joe Duncan. Yeah, and that's uh, part of the maturity in the offseason prep by Ryan Scott. He's really selling that pump fake, and those DBs are biting on it. So, well, we saw that against Shelbyville last week, and we see it again tonight against Coffee County. Beautiful pass, beautiful pump fake. Great route by Joe Duncan. Yeah, great doubt in the, in the cornerback bit on it. Justice Chadwick's kick goes deep into the end zone for the touchback. So that uh, that's set up by the Owen Stroop interception. So we see in the in the sudden change, the Tullahoma offense capitalizes big swing in the game. That Owen Stroop interception on a promising drive by Coffee County with Tullahoma up seven zip. And they're now up fourteen zip as they convert on that turnover. Coffee County's had the ball twice. They've had it for a long time. They've driven in the middle of the field. Tullahoma's made the big stops when they needed it. Yeah, and that interception ended uh, with Shimwell on the ground. I think he got his breath knocked out. Thank goodness it's not his knee hurt again. So back, back out on the field as the quarterback for the Red Raiders. Shimwell has Heaton on his left hip. Shimwell to throw. Rolls to the right. The pass for Heaton is complete, and he is leveled out of bounds by Stroop. After a gain of five. <laughs> Boy, Stroop's playing a game tonight, I tell you what. So, uh, this Tillema defense starting to get lathered up a little bit. You know, Coffee County's moved the ball, so it can be kind of a bend but don't break mentality. We stop them on a fourth down, then we stop them on an interception on their second drive. Doing well. So, a gain of five on the pass from Shimwell to Heaton. And it's second down and five Red Raiders at the 25. Walker split wide to the right. Osborne in the slot on the right. He left early. No flag. Screen pass to Heaton. Heaton to the 30. Heaton to the 35. Heaton lost the football. It's on the ground, and it's been recovered by Coffee County, and there's a flag on the play. So the pass 
to Heaton. Goes from the 25 to the 36. Well, that's a great play call by the Red Raiders. What do you do to slow down a big pass rush? You drop a screen down. So right play call there. We'll see what the the referee call is here. But uh, Gain of 11 on second and five for Coffee County. Yeah. Tullahoma, it's personal foul against both teams, so they'll be offsetting personal fouls. And that's what you expect in the coffee pot. Good grief. At least got to have some personal fouls, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the coffee pot. That's part of the thing that makes a rivalry, right? It's part of the deal. These teams do not like each other. So, evidently, it's not offsetting personal fouls because they're marching 15 yards off against Tullahoma. Well, there was two, two penalties, I think, offsetting personal fouls on both teams, and they called it. Okay. They called a holding on Tullahoma and a personal foul, so we're going to get a net. No, they called a holding on Coffee County and a personal foul against Tullahoma. So they march off the 15 yards, then they march off the 10 yards for the holding penalty at the spot of the foul. So what Coffee County is looking at is second down and two at the Red Raider 28-yard line. After all that, it's second down. After all that, it's second and two. <laughs> but it would have been a first down yeah. for Coffee County. Three receivers to the right for the Red Raiders. Shimwell rolls that way. Wants to option. There's the pitch to Heaton. Heaton, slippery. Out to the 30. Out to the 35 to the 36 goes Heaton. And that's a first down for Coffee County. Yeah, he's quick. He did a good job of planting his foot and uh, making the move to, to juke out uh, Caden Tucker and gain the first down for Coffee County. So quick feet by, by Mr. Heaton at running back on that one on the pitch. You know, I don't know how this game's gonna turn out. And so far, Coffee County hasn't been able to score, but their offense looks better than we've seen oh, it since Alante Taylor left. Yeah, I think the biggest thing that I'm impressed with is their wide receiving core. They do a good job and they mix, they, they got good play call and they mix Big, their plays up well. receivers, yeah. except for Walker, and he's really quick. Shimwell to throw, Shimwell. Pass out in the flat, incomplete, intended for Walker, but it was a little high and there was a lot of traffic. Yeah, he started shuffling his feet back there, so it rushed that pass a little bit. 36 was open around the 45-yard line, so first overthrow there by Mr. Shimwell. And pressure makes a difference. Sure does. He got happy feet on that one. 5.42 left to go in the first half. Tullahoma leads Coffee County, 14 to nothing. Coming up at halftime, you light tube. Watchers can watch these bands perform. And here's an end around to Walker. Walker out over the 35, close to the 40, goes Walker. He, he's a, he's maybe the quickest player they've had since Alante. Yeah, he sure is. And uh, Spotted at the 39. Senior. Yeah, he is a senior. Where has he been? A gain of three. It's third and seven, Red Raiders. At their 39. Where's Walker been for a couple of years? I agree. Not on the field. Maybe he's a move-in transfer. Mm -hmm. Shimwell to throw. Third and seven. There it is over the middle. Shimwell's pass intercepted. Will Parton. Parton to the 40. 45-50. Parton into Coffee County territory at the 46-yard line. Interception number two for the Wildcats. Well, Shimwell made the wrong throw on that when Travis Martin was open on the right side for a sure touchdown if he could get the ball to him. But give credit to Will Parton. He baited him a little bit, came off that coverage, and made an interception, tell him a second of the game. The ball hawk secondary paying off tonight for the Tullahoma defense. Turnovers will kill you. That's two picks. Killing Coffee County right now. In Tullahoma consecutive series. Has it at the Red Raider 45-yard line with 4.56 left to go in the first half. Cats lead it 14 to nothing. Well, Parton knew what to do with that football, didn't he, Scott? Nice he really did. Nice after that interception. You talked about 6'4 receivers. How about 6'4 yeah. defensive back? There you Scott go. Scott back to throw. He's being pressured out of the pocket. Scott wants to throw it long for Duncan. That pass incomplete. Out of bounds, second down. Scott on the run. That's a nice throw running to his left. Yeah, rolling out to his left, but he was under heavy duress. A man uh, charging fast for the Red Raiders and uh, just threw the ball out of bounds. Duncan caught it, but he was good six, seven yards out of bounds on that one. Just ran out of real estate. He wanted to go deep on that one, find Duncan again. Keyshawn Cummings is back in at running back for the Wildcats. Malik Grizzard, Brody Melton split to the left. Jacob Dixon, Joe Duncan to the right. 
Second down and 10, Cats. Scott to Keyshawn, coming straight up the gut. Three, maybe four footballs loose. And that's been recovered by Coffey County. Tullahoma coughs it up. After Keyshawn Cummings got four or five yards, he fumbled, Coffee County recovered it. First turnover of the night for Tullahoma. Well, fumbles have hit the ball three times. Coffee County had two of their own. They recovered both, but the ball's falling in their hands on these, on these loose balls right now. So first down and 10 Red Raiders at the Coffee County 40. And they have th- 436 left to go in the half. It's a hot, muggy, muggy night. That football gets sweaty, and that pigskin gets slippery. Well, after the first carry, though, they've done a good job on, on Cummings. He, had, he ripped a, a big one open early, but other than that, they've uh, stymied him pretty good, has that uh, Red Raider defense tonight. Shimwell's kind of hobbling as he comes in at quarterback for Coffee County. Red Raiders at their 40 with first and 10. And Connor Heaton is the running back. And I think we have got a delay of game against Coffee County. Well, that's bad. You come out to, to take a possession over after a fumble and your offense comes out lackadaisical and you, now you're looking at first and 15, putting you behind the sticks a little bit there. Seemed like a short 40 second clock to me. Yeah, but, it did. <laughs> it was real quick. <laughs> We're making notes and we look up and it's ah, delay of game. So Red Raiders first and 15 at the Coffee County 35. Here late in the second quarter, Shimwell to throw. Little screen pass for Osborne. Osborne out to the 40, 45-50. Osborne 45. Osborne tripped up at the 40-yard line of Tullahoma. That's a big play for Coffee County and a first down. Yeah, great tackle there by Caden Tucker at the 40-yard line. He gets. He gets past Caden Tucker, and it's, it's pay dirt. It's a long touchdown. There's a flag on the play, and this one's coming back. Wow. After gain Killer of, penalty for Coffee County after that play. After a gain of 25 yards, the call is holding against the Red Raiders, and that'll take it all the way back to the Tullahoma 25-yard line. So it was first and 15. That's probably going to put it first and 30. Well, it's a spot foul. Okay. So it, Marked off from where the marked off, but play be- happened, but it's first and 25. Okay. Well, their, their biggest play on offense so far, and it's negated for penalty. They've had a couple of nice plays. Had that little screen pass earlier to Heaton, uh, a penalty called on. Tell you what, that over-the-middle pass has yeah. been open all night for Coffee County. And Jalen Osborne, I love what I'm seeing out of him at wide receiver. Very good athlete. Shimwell to throw, pass complete and incomplete. Had it right in his mitts. Caden Tucker put the hit on him, and he dropped it. That was Blake Phillips for Coffee County, second and 25. Well, Tucker starting to find the football, so uh, we didn't hear much out of him in the first quarter, but he's starting to make some plays here in the second. And uh, that young man has a nose for the football. We've seen him uh, all last year be a leader on defense. He calls the signals and uh, a very integral part of that Wildcat success on defense. 420. 420 left to go in the first half. Two receivers to the right, two to the left for the Red Raiders. Shimwell to throw. Here comes some pressure from Bradford. Long pass, incomplete, way over the head of everybody. Nice coverage there by Parton as uh, Coffee County's Travis Martin, Ken, just could not get loose. Oh, you're, you're exactly right. And, you know, you mentioned Parton size. When I mentioned Osborne size at 6'4", you know, 6'3", 6'4", for Parton. He's just a rangy safety. And uh, he's done a really good job the first two weeks back here at that safety position. Man, he covers a lot of ground. He's got that those long arms uh, and, and just, uh, man, he's rangy. He's just a rangy guy. Ethan Hargrove in for Tullahoma on third and 25. Shimwell to throw. Here comes the pressure. Here comes the pressure. Shimwell just throws it out of bounds to nobody. There was nobody remotely close to the football. That's got to be pass interference. Uh, I mean, uh, intentional grounding, and it is. Yeah, they're going to get him. The nearest receiver for Coffee County was 25 yards down the field. He's a senior, Ken. He should know better than that. Yeah. There was Uh, nobody close. Yeah, you know, when you get that – third down and distance that you know the the pass is coming so 
He was running for his life, tell them to pin their ears back and came after him, and he just grounds the ball. So, boy, this drive has turned into disaster for Coffee County. They're backed up now to the 10-yard line, so penalties have really – uh, you know, flip field position on this drive in favor of the Telema Wildcats. It is now third and 40. Third and 40 at the Coffee County 10 yard line. Mercy, you nope, may see it. That's a loss of down. It's that's fourth right. and 40. Fourth and that's 40. Right. How about a fake mm. punt here on fourth and fourth 40 and from your 40. end zone? Back to receive Jacob Dixon standing at the Coffee County 40-yard line. There's 3.54 to go, so Tullahoma's got plenty of time. Well, and that key, this drive for Coffee County started on, the, on their 40-yard line. They had excellent field position after the Keyshawn Cummings fumble recovery. They're back up their 10. That Tullahoma's flipped field position off these penalties. Coffee County trying to get a player on the field, and now they do, but not before. Somebody called a timeout, and now they don't. So for a fourth and 40 for Coffee County at the Red Raider 10. And the punt is in Weldon, 6'3", 185, junior. And again, Dixon back to receive. Now he better put a little hang time, a line drive punt. Dixon could take this one back. Snaps a good one. Weldon off the side of his foot. Dixon runs up and kicks the ball, and it's loose on the ground, and Coffee County's got it. One of the few times you'll see Jacob Dixon make a mistake, he yep. did it. Coffee County's football. Well, it was a low line drive punt. He tries to come up field. It had to run in about 10 yards to even get his hands on it, and the ball just hits off his knee, and uh, Coffee County recovers. So uh, two Wildcat turnovers here late in the second quarter. So Tullahoma, or Coffee County, will have it first down and 10 at the Red Raider 24 with 3.44 left to go in the first half. Tullahoma leading 14 to nothing. But the Wildcats uh, have turned it over twice in a row here. Yeah, Coffee County gets a break there, so let's see what they can do. They're down 14 zip, 3.44 to go in the half as they start this drive on their own 24-yard line. See if they continue uh, trying to throw it into the middle of the field. Been very successful for them. Shimwell hands it to Heaton, and Heaton got nothing. He's stuffed in the backfield by a host of Wildcats. Big Cam Robinson having himself a night. It's a loss on the play. Oh, he sure is. Uh, Cam Robinson playing tough inside. He's uh, beating his man in there. This guy's uh, six foot, 260 pounds, also plays right tackle for the Wildcats, but he's doing an excellent job. Uh, along with Caden Bradford and company on that defensive line tonight. A loss of three, second and 13, call it two, second and 12, Coffee County at the 22-yard line. Shimwell wants to throw, rolls left. His man is, oh, almost picked off. Joe Duncan had a bead on that football, Ken. He had nothing but green grass in the end zone, just couldn't quite hold on. Well, the Tellema senior jumps the route, has the ball right in his hand, so he was looking at that goal line. So, uh, tough break there, Mr. Duncan. I, I know he would like to have that one back because uh, that could have been a pick six in interception number three by that Wildcat secondary. I'd like to have that one back. Yes, indeed. 2.59 to go in the half. Cats on top by 14. Coffee County third and 12 at its 22. Shimwell, here comes pressure, screen pass incomplete. Fourth down, Red Raiders. Well, nice uh, job by the THS defense. Uh, they hold them after the <laughs> Dixon uh, muff punt. Does not hurt them after that fumble recovery to Coffee County 24. Coffee County loses two yards. And yeah, so on fourth and 12, two on that drive. they'll punt it for at the 22, and Tullahoma, plenty of time, 2.56 to go in the half. Well, Dixon's going to get a shot to redeem himself here, so he's uh, to, setting up at the Coffee County 46-yard line, ready to receive this one. Snap to Weldon. It's a good one. This time it's a high, high kick. Fair catch called for and made by Jacob Dixon at the Tullahoma 48-yard line. So the Wildcats back on offense. Two-minute drill time in Manchester. This is the 96th Coffee Pot game. Tullahoma's on top, 14 to nothing. 
Well, tell, not far. Tallahoma gets a first down here. They'll be in nearly field goal range. And uh, we have not seen Mr. Justice Chadwick attempt a field goal here in the first two games. It would be nice to get a couple first downs, maybe score a touchdown. If not, at least have a field goal opportunity. Jackson Sheffield is the tailback. Tallahoma stacks two receivers on the left side. Splits two to the right. Scott hands it to Sheffield. Sheffield bounces it outside. Jackson works his way for two, three yards on the carry. Got inside Coffee County territory, maybe four. Well, it looked like Jackson wanted to take the ball inside, and in the, in the, uh, the nose guard made a good play, flushed him outside around the right edge, and he, he made a couple yards out of it, four yards on that one, three or four yards. Spotted at the 47, a gain of four for Sheffield. Second and six, Tullahoma. With 2.15 left to go in the first half. Wildcats split three receivers to the left. Here's Sheffield again. Sheffield's got a little crease. Sheffield near the 40, close to the first down. I think he's a yard short. Tullahoma may call a timeout right Plenty here. of time for the Wildcats. 2.06 to go in the half. I don't know if there may be a measurement here. Let's see. It's close to first. It is a Wildcat first down. Tullahoma with their full complement of three timeouts at their disposal. Ball rest at the Coffee County 41. 155 left to go in the half. Scott to throw. Now he's going to tuck it and run. And Ryan Scott's down to the 35 yard line. A gain of six. Oh, nice, nice scramble there. Nobody open and a wise decision there by Scott. I believe that's his first rushing attempt of the night. Tullahoma playing a little hurry up here. 135 left to go in the half. Wildcats. Second and four at the Coffee County 35-yard line. Tullahoma using a lot of time here. Scott now keeps it. Scott cuts it back inside to the 30, spins his way down to the 26, and a Wildcat first down. Well, beautiful cut. Now, it was probably his third one because they'd stopped him on a fourth and one on the first drive. But uh, nice cut there. He put his left foot in the ground, juke the defensive end, made a cut right up the middle. Tullahoma moving here. At the Coffee County 27-yard line, the Wildcats have it with 1.15 to go in the half. Scott rolls right, looking for Melton. He's covered. Scott's going to throw it downfield in the end zone. That pass is incomplete, intended down there for Dixon. Did he catch it? He caught it. Jacob Unbelievable. Dixon at the 7-yard line, a gain of 20. Wow. You know, I thought that the ball was knocked away at the goal line there because it was tight coverage, but the Tellama wide receiver cradles it in deep it in at Coffee the County territory. Yes, indeed. Tellahoma first and goal at the seven-yard line. Scott hands it to Cummings. Cummings powers his way over the defenders for the touchdown. Keyshawn Cummings. The diesel trucks in from the seventh-yard line. Well, Coffee County's offense, uh, their inability to, to grind out a couple first downs and punt the ball on Tellema side of the field, set Tellema short field. They go, what, 50 yards on that one to push the lead to 20 to zip. With 47 seconds left to go in the first half. Reagan Tomlin is the, ho is the snapper, the long snapper. Wade Collins is the holder. And Justice Chadwick. Tullahoma's kicker. Nice two-minute offense. They did not even have to use a timeout on that drive. There's the snap, the hold, the kick. It's good. 47 seconds to go in the first half. Tullahoma 21, Coffee County nothing. This is the light two. Tullahoma drives 51 yards on six plays using two minutes and two seconds off the clock, scoring on a seven-yard run by Keyshawn Cummings, and the Wildcats now lead the Red Raiders 21 to nothing. Again, happy anniversary to Raymond and Janice Welch. They're loving 60th this one. anniversary. <laughs> Cats on top 21 yeah. to nothing. They're partying at the Welch house. They sure no are. No question. No doubt about it. Justice Chadwick's kickoff 
goes five yards deep into the end zone for the touchback. And Coffee County will begin at its 20. Well, this, uh, you know, defense for Tullahoma, suffocating defense has really set the tone. Those two interceptions uh, by the secondary, Owen Stroop and Will Parton, really have uh, changed this game. So, you know, Shimwell had early success passing. Uh, they got some yardage, but those two interceptions there as he tried to go over the middle is, is haunted the Red Raiders. Tullahoma trying to go to 2-0 and on the season. This is the last non-region game the Wildcats will play. Tullahoma will be off next week. And two weeks from tonight, the Cats will welcome the Marshall County Tigers to Wilkins Stadium. I think it's homecoming. Isn't that what the Dr. Quick told us that I the first game so. was homecoming. Yes, sir. We know there's a tailgate party. And uh, Heaton loses a yard on first down. Well, they're definitely just going to try to run out clock here. And Tullahoma will receive the second half kickoff. So, I'm sorry, Coffee County will receive the second half kickoff. So, they're going to try to regroup at halftime in a hole 21 to zip and see what they can get going offensively after the half. Shimwell hands it to Heaton. Heaton fights his way out over the 20 for a gain of four. So after a scoreless first quarter, Tullahoma, we've outscored them three touchdowns to zip here in the second. And that's the end of the first half, ladies and gentlemen. We've played... 24 minutes here at Card and Gerald Field. Your score at halftime, Tullahoma 21, Coffee County nothing. You're watching Tullahoma Wildcat football on the Light Tube Sports Network. Furniture and Merchandise Outlet is a factory direct furniture store based here in Tennessee. Family owned and operated for 27 years, we promise you hometown service and the guaranteed best price in the state every time. Come see our 30,000 square foot showroom with a warehouse to match and we'll help you shop for every room in your home. Thank you, Tullahoma, for voting us Finest Furniture Store three years in a row. We look forward to many more.
Ladies and gentlemen, the Tullahoma High School Band. Maddie's Body Shop was voted Mayor's Choice Small Business of the Year by the Tullahoma Area Chamber of Commerce for 2016. And we work daily to earn that award from every one of our customers. We specialize in using the most current technology available, including environmentally friendly waterborne paint. We work with all insurance companies and will gladly help you with any insurance claims or questions you may have. Call us at 931-455-2570 or come by our new office located at 606 South Jefferson Street. Be sure to look Welcome for Welcome back to Cardin Gerald Field in Manchester, Tennessee, along with Chris Barstad and Ken Keller. I'm Scott Shasteen. This is the 96th Coffee Pot game. Tullahoma leads Coffee County 20 one to nothing. The Wildcats took the opening kickoff. Unable to uh, convert a fourth and four, Coffee County took over, drove all the way down the field with a couple of penalties helping them out. They went for it on fourth and one, didn't make it. Tullahoma took over, ran out the first quarter, and on the first play of the second quarter, Ryan Scott threw an 18 yard shuffle pass to Chris Usselton. He scored. Tullahoma led seven to nothing. The next Coffee County possession ended with an interception by Tullahoma's Stroop. And that was Owen Stroop with the pick with 7.50 left to go in the first half. Tullahoma only needed two plays to go 65 yards, a 56-yard pass from Ryan Scott to Joe Duncan. And with 7.06 to go, Chadwick converted the point after. Tullahoma led 14 to nothing. A series of turnovers then. Coffee County on its next possession was intercepted by Will Parton. Tullahoma fumbled on its next possession, recovered by Coffee County. Coffee County was stopped on fourth down, had a fourth and 40, punted it. Jacob Dixon fumbled the punt, muffed the punt is the official word. Recovered by Coffee County, they were a quick three and out. Tullahoma took over at its 49-yard line with 2.48 to go in the half and scored on a seven-yard run by Keyshawn Cummings to give the Wildcats this 21 to nothing lead. Coffee can, uh, Tullahoma will kick off to open the second half. Mr. Keller, your uh, interpretation of this first half of action. Well, first half, uh, both teams throwed it on four down plays in the first quarter. Coffee County and Tullahoma both moving the ball well. I thought running back Jackson Sheffield gave Tullahoma a spark on offense late in the first quarter. We get three touchdowns in the second quarter and a couple of good defensive interceptions by Will Parton and Owen Stroop. So, really, I would like to see in the last, you know, 13 games Tullahoma played last year, 12 and one, two games this year. How many times Tullahoma scored in the final two minutes of the first half? I bet you we've scored in at least half of those games. And really, when you go into halftime, Scott, with the momentum, I think it sets the tone for the second half. And Tullahoma gets to play defense and kick off here to start this third quarter with a three-touchdown lead. Uh, defense has played well tonight. They've bent, but they have not broke. A couple of scores of interest. Fayetteville leads Lewis County 14 to nothing at halftime. Creekwood leads Fairview 7 to nothing. That's a first quarter score. Mount Juliet leads Maplewood 21 to nothing. No score yet from Shelbyville and Marshall County. Loretto leads Lawrence County 14 to 12 at the half. A lot of games postponed tonight because of COVID. Huntland was a beneficiary of one. Franklin County, the beneficiary of one. So Tullahoma will kick it off to open this second half. The Wildcats will be moving right to left with a 21 to nothing lead. What do you look for from Tullahoma here? Yeah, let me ask that differently. What's Coffee County got to do to get back in the game? Well, you got to you got to finish drives. I mean, you got to convert drives. They move the the ball well. Uh, you know, a couple drives through the air, shim well. Tullahoma's defense really amped up the defensive pressure, the pass rush. I thought on Shimwell in the second quarter, he was not as sharp as the first quarter. But, more they've, they've got to have some breaks go their way to just score a touchdown and, and try to get some momentum uh, over to their sidelines. Wildcat offensive line has really given uh, Ryan Scott plenty of time to throw. Oh, and, the, and that's the key. We talked about, you know, this is a game, rivalry games are games in the trenches. Right now the offensive line for Coffee County getting matched by our defensive front. We're putting pressure on Shimwell. They're not touching Ryan Scott, and he's looked really impressive in the first half of this football game. The War Pigs 
<laughs> have not gotten it done. The pancake posse yeah, has. Yeah. Coach Olive poured the syrup on them before the game, man. Some, some of that pure sure Vermont did. maple syrup. Sure did. S smooth and sweet. They're playing physical tonight. Justice Chadwick set to kick off for the Wildcats. Back to receive that kick is Jaden Foster, 5'9", 160 sophomore. Has not touched the ball so far for Coffee County. Every one of Chadwick's kicks have gone into the end zone. You know, they had opportunities early in the game. Uh, they uh, started out uh, on field position, I think, around their 40-yard line. They've had a couple drives or, or times they've took over, you know, with positive field position. But uh, Ken, what about the not after Chadwick kicks it. What about the pooch kick right at about the 40-yard <laughs> line right now? I see what you see there, partner. That's a big hole of green there. Yeah, you got the Coffee County guys at the 49 and at the 25. So, there's 25, four yards of clear green right there behind that first line of defense. Chadwick, full kick into the end zone, five yards. It's another touchback for Tullahoma. Justice has been on target tonight. Uh, he sure has. So Coffee County will begin this second half at their 20-yard line, trailing Tullahoma 21 to nothing. You can watch the replay of this game beginning Monday night at 7 o'clock on Light Tube Channel 23. Yeah, and then uh, just stay on there after it's over and watch the John Olive Show. Big Logan Crouch leads the defense on to the field. Biggest player on the team, 6'5", 315. You know, I think Coffee County has to has to get their uh, Jalen Osborne back involved in the passing game. He caught some balls early, looked really good in the first quarter, but second quarter was pretty quiet. So Coffee County set to go, first and ten at their twenty. Connor Shemwell's gone all the way at quarterback. He hands it off to Heaton, and Heaton fights his way out to the twenty-four. Gain of four for the running back. He's down. Looks like Connor Heaton coming up slow. He's up. That's 74 defense, our offensive lineman there for Coffee County. Robert Gilly coming up slowly, but he's back up. So Coffee County, second down and six at the 24 yard line of the Red Raiders. Great crowd here tonight. Just a wonderful night for high school football. Shimwell's on the run. Taylor giving chase. Here comes Stroop, and Stroop Ooh. lowers the boom on Connor Shimwell. Oh, man. And that's a, game, a loss of a couple. Well, that's there's first. no targeting. There's no helmet to helmet contact caught in high school. I don't know if he got him on the shoulder pad or the helmet, but a violent collision down there. Shimwell shaking there. Stroop lays the lumber to Shimwell. Looked like all shoulder pad. I believe here. it was. Good clean hit. Loss of two on the play. Third and eight Red Raiders at their 22. Coffee County splits three receivers to the left, one to the right. Shimwell to throw. Pocket breaks down. Shimwell's being flushed out, throws it incomplete. His intended receiver really never saw the football. It's fourth down. Yeah. Tullahoma's defense comes out strong. Excellent push by the interior defensive line. They flush him out of the pocket and then number 40. The linebacker for Tellum. That's Brandon Painter. Painter yeah. yeah, Brandon Painter uh, comes after him, and he just unloads the ball. He don't want to get hit anymore. It's Connor Shimwell. So, good start for the Tellum defense as they want to try to hold this shutout intact here. Weldon set to punt. It's a good snap. It's a low knuckleball away. Dixon wisely just lets that go. Takes a Tullahoma roll all the way up to the Coffee County 43-yard line. So that's a 21-yard punt for Coffee County. Not exactly what they needed. So Tullahoma's going to have great field position at the Red Raider 43. Coffee County uses almost two minutes. 10:09 left to go, third quarter. Cats on top, seven, uh, 21 to nothing. Ian Poe, Logan Crouch, J.T. Taylor, Swigger, Robinson, all in there on that offensive line. Jackson Sheffield starts the second half at running back. Tullahoma splits three receivers to the left. Wildcats in great position to bomb on the first play. They'll hand it to Sheffield, though, 
and Sheffield, not much room there, maybe a yard. Boy, big Logan Crouch just caught him out on defense. He's five yards down the field blocking, mowing his man down. That pancake posse now starting to feel it, feeding on these Red Raiders. Sheffield no gain on the play. It's his second down, or a gain of one. Call it one. Second down and nine. Tullahoma at the 42. Scott, pass to Malik Grizzard, complete. Grizzard breaks the tackle, spins his way down to the 31. That's a Wildcat first down and the first catch for sophomore Malik Grizzard, and he comes up hobbling. Well, that's unfortunate because he made it look like he tweaked his ankle but made a really good catch and, and spun up for field yards after catch. Nice timing. Gain of 11. First and 10, Tullahoma at the Coffee County 31. Ryan Scott has been sharp tonight in the passing game. Scott has Sheffield in the backfield. Sheffield gets it. A little misdirection play. Sheffield inside the 30 to the 28, the gain of three. <laughs> so Jackson gets three, second down and seven. Tullahoma at the Red Raider 28. Cats on the march. Split two receivers to the left, two to the right. That's Usselton to the far right. Dixon and Duncan are stacked on the left side. Tullahoma's shown this a lot. Scott to throw. As that wide receiver screen intended for Dixon, I think that's the first incompletion on that play we've seen all year. Yeah, he delivered that one high. So high pass that time. Dixon unable to corral that one. He's got good hands, but that one's just too, too hot and too high. That may be Tullahoma's first incomplete pass, Ken. Wow. I can't wow. remember another one. So far, we'll go back and check it. I think we have one out of bounds on a bomb that he just made out of real estate. Good That's point. about the only one I remember. Third and seven, Wildcats at the Red Raider 28. Scott to throw, here comes the pressure, and he is dropped. Ryan Scott tried to get away, sacked back at the 29, a loss of one. It's fourth down. Yeah, the whole field there quickly by Jacob Barlow, the sophomore linebacker for Coffee County. Tullahoma in field goal range here, though. Tullahoma will try a 46-yard field goal by Justice Chadwick. The holder is Wade Collins. The snapper is Reagan Tomlin. From the 36-yard line, a 46-yard attempt. Good snap, good hold. Chadwick boots it up high into the night. And that kick is good wow. uh, from 46 yards away. 7.55 left to go in the third quarter. Tullahoma 24, Coffee County nothing. This is the Light Tube Sports Network. Serving you as a local firefighter. Proudly served our country in the United States Air Force. Serving Tullahoma. Helping our kids. <laughs> Hi, I'm Terry Stroop. Your comfort is our service. We'd like to thank Tullahoma for the privilege of serving your heating and cooling needs. Well, Ken, it's obvious Coffee County's ready to get out of here. After that field goal, the clock ran from 7.57 <laughs> to 7.43. Yeah, I pointed at it. You were watching it and, and noticed it. But, yes, clearly a lot of seconds rolled off there. I, the timekeeper blew that one. But... You know, 24 zip for Tullahoma. Some of these Coffee County Red Raiders may try to get over to Cracker Barrel for late uh, Blackberry Cobbler. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to have one of those myself. I'm telling you, they're good. Chadwick kicks it off deep and long for the touchback. I think that's his sixth of the night. Well, very encouraging to see that field goal by, by Justice Chadwick. I know you're up, you know, not a whole lot of pressure there. 21 to zip lead, but you know, a 46 yarder, that's a long field goal for a high school kicker, man. And he got good loft up, snap perfect, hold down, and he split them. Split the uprights on that one. So parting in at safety, Ethan Hargrove and Chris Usselton are the corners. Landon Fouch in there. Owen Stroop, Jay, uh, Caden Tucker, Brandon Robinson, Bradford across that defensive line. Coffee County first and 10 at its 20. Handoff on the end around Walker. 
Walker's on the far sideline, and Walker maybe got two, three yards. Chased down there for Tullahoma. By number 45, Ethan Anderson, 5'8", 190, a senior. Yeah, we, we got to stay alert here because they're probably going to be substituting a lot here with this big lead. But, uh, you know, Coach Olive always likes to talk in terms of dominating the trenches and imposing their will on the lines of scrimmage. And I think really from just into the second quarter, middle of the second quarter on, this, this game's been dominated by the Wildcats. Timeout on the field. Tullahoma leads Coffee County 24 to nothing. This is the Light Tube Sports Network. Not sure who took that timeout or if that was an official's timeout for a water break because of the heat. It, the scoreboard shows both teams with three timeouts, so I'm not sure there. Really never saw an indication who was calling that timeout other than the official. Coffee County has it, second and nine at the Red Raider 21. Three receivers to the right. And Shimwell in the shotgun. Shimwell hands it straight up the gut. Connor Heaton works his way out to the 25-yard line. Gain of four. Third down and five, Red Raiders at the 25-yard line, trailing Tullahoma 24 to nothing with 6.50 to go in the third quarter. Coffee seems, County desperately yeah. needs a first down. No urgency for Coffee County offensively. Slow coming out of the huddle. Shimwell to Heaton. Heaton, he's fighting for that first down. I don't think he made it. Needed five, got four. It's fourth down. They certainly definitely do not have the pep in their step or the look in their eye that they had uh, early in this game. So take it from the 25 to the 28, a gain of three. Fourth and two Red Raiders. At their 28, Coffee County's going to go for it. Got nothing to lose here. Down 24 to nothing. Halfway through the third quarter. Three receivers to the right for Coffee County. Let's see if they're trying to draw Tullahoma off or if they're going to run a play. And they're going to call a timeout. Timeout on the field. 5.57 to play in the third. The Cats lead the Raiders 24 to nothing on the light two. Rent a timeout here. Coffee County looking at fourth down and two. Loretto now leads Lawrence County 21-12 in the third quarter. Montgomery Central leads Clarksville Northeast 13 to nothing at halftime. See if Coffee County has decided to punt. Yes. As Weldon makes his way in on fourth down and two. Dixon back standing at midfield. Good snap to Weldon. Gets the kick away. It's a high, short, end over end. Hits a Coffee County player at the 48, and it will be down there, there at the 49. Tullahoma, again, great field position, leading 24 to nothing. It's been all Wildcats, Mr. Keller. Uh, no doubt about it. Tullahoma trying to go to 2 and 0. Again, no more non-region games. Cats will have a week off next week and then play eight consecutive weeks of region contests, four at home and four on the road. Well, good news for Tullahoma. Malik Grizzard back on the field after he uh, jarred his ankle there on that.
first uh, pass reception of the season for him. Good to see him back out there. Tullahoma first and 10 at the Wildcat 49. Scott hands it to Cummings. Cummings nothing. Well, the one plus, I guess you could say, for Coffee County would be their, their defense against the run. Interior run defense, yeah. yes. Tullahoma's not tried to run it outside at all tonight. No. Not at all. You know, that little wide receiver shuffle pass from the quarterback scored a couple times, so that, that play's been effective, but they've uh, scored a couple touchdowns with. Well, and at this point, you know, you're not showing Marshall County anything right. else. Scott, screen to Melton. Melton on the outside, breaks a tackle at the 35. Melton to the 45, to the 40. Oh. Melton. Works yeah. his way down to the 36-yard line and a Wildcat first down. Well, that was an excellent rack uh, by Melton, a run after the catch. So uh, just that little screen, and he does all the work there, getting that ball downfield for the first. Gain of 14 yards, first and 10 Wildcats at the Red Raider 36. Another big physical target for Ryan Scott. Well, Tullahoma's receiver core is so impressive. Mm -hmm. Not just their size and experience, but the way they block. And we thought on the Shastine show, we talked about that matchup was going to be tough for this young Coffee County secondary. Scott to throw. He's chased out of the pocket. Scott now got a man wide open. It's Keyshawn Cummings. Touchdown, Tullahoma. Ken, you talk about the maturation <laughs> of Ryan Scott. Yeah. He kept his eyes downfield, found his big running back running wide open, and connected with him perfectly. Yeah, so the diesel finds his way down the field, and you're right, Ryan Scott buying himself time back there, keeping his eyes up, uh, good vision there, field vision as he surveys the field and throws a strike to Cummings. Good concentration by Cummings. He was wide open sometimes. Those are the hardest ones to catch. He made a two-handed catch on that. Good job. Justice Chadwick lines up to attempt the point after. The kick is up, and the kick is good. We're rolling now, folks. 4.34 left to go in the third quarter. Telehoma 31, Coffee County nothing. This is the Light Tube Sports Network. Furniture and Merchandise Outlet is a factory direct furniture store based here in Tennessee. Family owned and operated for 27 years, we promise you hometown service and the guaranteed best price in the state every time. Come see our 30,000 square foot showroom with a warehouse to match and we'll help you shop for every room in your home. Thank you, Tullahoma, for voting us finest furniture store three years in a row. We look forward to many more. Well, I suspect that some Tullahoma's players' night might be over or about over with 4.34 to go. In the third quarter, the Wildcats now lead Coffee County 30 one to nothing. Two years ago, Tullahoma won over here 35 to nothing. Last year, the Cats won it 42-13. So domination continues for Tullahoma and Ken. Barring an unforeseen absolute collapse, the coffee pot will stay at Tullahoma High School for the fifth year in a row. Well, Starbucks uh, came out with their pumpkin spice lattes this week, so I would encourage all Wildcat fans to go get one. Here's the kickoff. It's bobbled by Coffee County at the 10. 15, 20, 25, driven out of bounds by the Wildcats, but there's a flag on the play. This one's coming back. Illegal block by Coffee County at the 10-yard line. Scott, what was the official yardage on that long pass from Ryan Scott to Keyshawn Cummings? 36 yards. 36 51-yard yard drive. It only took three plays. And used a minute and 10 seconds off the clock. Coffee County is going to be all the way back at its five-yard line to start this drive. Well, that's something new that we've seen. You know, Tullahoma sends uh, a running back out of the backfield deep in a pattern down the middle of the field. Keyshawn Cunning coming sneaks the diesel sneaks downfield. I, think I don't he, know how you can miss that big guy, Scott, if you're well, in the Coffee I, County secondary, right? I think he was probably Ryan's third option yeah. maybe, fourth yeah. option. Ryan, that's the best job I've seen him do of eluding the rush and keeping his eyes downfield rather than tucking it and running it because there was nobody within 10 yards of Cummings. Boy, I, I agree. You know, we talked about last season, you know, that, uh, you know, he was coming into his first start, but now he got 13 starts on his belt, three playoff games, two this year. So 15 start, we see the maturation process. Uh, you know, really, we see him growing uh, in, his, in his quarterback abilities. He's doing an excellent job, making good decisions tonight as well, delivering the ball on target. Heat 
straight up the middle for Coffee County gains nothing. It's second down and 10. Telehoma's Cam Robinson, a little slow getting up. With 4.07 left off. to go. Yeah, he's a little slow getting up. Yeah, he's slow getting up and his helmet's off. He's not mm. look especially good. Unable to put any weight on his left leg, but Cameron hobbles off the field. And Telehoma prepares for second down and 10 at the Coffee County 5. Well, Big Cam's played an excellent football game tonight, too. We called him out a lot tonight. He's really had a nice game. I suspect his night is finished. Maybe just a cramp the way they're treating it. So Coffee County, second and 10 at the five yard line. Dangerous territory here. Shimwell to throw. Here comes pressure. Pass to Heaton. Complete. Heaton's gotten very little room. Oh, wow. And then Hargrove lowers the boom. <laughs> Ethan Hargrove wow. at about the eight yard line. Well, we. Uh Young Hargrove, the sophomore, he was the only freshman to let her last season, and he really broke out last week. We noticed in the second half he was making lots of plays against the Golden Eagles on the road, so he's back in there tonight to get another opportunity. Gain of three, third down and seven, Coffee County at the Red Raider eight. 3.33 left to go third quarter. Telehoma leads 31 to nothing. Defensive end Caden Bradford with the intense pressure again on that play on Shimwell. Shimwell to throw. Pocket collapses, pass incomplete, intended for Heaton. Telehoma's defense now, Ken's just pinning their ears back. Yeah, that was Jackson Sheffield, I believe. Sheffield in there, linebacker. Came in there like a bullet. Fourth down and seven, Coffee County at its eight. Red Raiders are going to punt it, and Chris Usselton will get a shot to return this punt, standing at his 40 yard line. So get some guys doing some different things. Wade Collins and Nathaniel DeLaud are warming up on the sidelines. So I think Ryan Scott's night is probably over. There's the snap to Weldon. Gets the kick away off the side of his foot. Takes a Telehoma bounce. Usselton catches it at the 35 and, and runs to the 32. And that's where Telehoma will take over. Well, gutsy move by number 11, but a nice job. He uh, saved Telehoma probably six or seven yards in field position on that one. Well, this whole half is being played in the Coffee County end sure of the field. Sure is. The Red Raiders are worn out. They can get nothing done offensively right now against that stout Telehoma defense. First and ten, Telehoma. The wall. So let's see who our quarter. Scott, maybe get one more series here. First team offense back out on the field, leading 31 to nothing, but in Coffee County territory at the 32. Cats maybe like to get that mercy clock running, get out of here. Another touchdown would do it. Scott, Sheffield, Sheffield cuts it back inside. Jackson inside the 30, burrows his way to the 27. A tough inside run, and we talked about coming to this game, one of the keys to victory would be really shrinking those turnovers. Telehoma, Ryan Scott had three last week, two picks and a, and a fumble in field goal range, but I tell you what, he is uh, – Matured before our eyes tonight and played a fantastic football game. Telehoma's offense been pretty clean tonight. Three touchdown passes for the senior QB. And now he's looking at second and five at the Coffee County 27. Two receivers left, two to the right. Scott wants to throw over the middle, complete to Melton. Melton at the 10, Melton at the five, Melton for the touchdown. Melton. With his second touchdown, Brody just, that's that over-the-middle play, Ken, that Telehoma loves it. Yeah, that RPO play, you uh, you know, run pass option. So he, he fakes the handoff, a good fake, the, the, the ball fake to the running back, puts a strike there to Melton, and he just slants, slants it in for the touchdown. So big run, pass and catch, another touchdown for Ryan Scott in the air. Coffee County's will to <laughs> tackle. Mercy has uh, dropped considerably. Chadwick to attempt the point after. Snap is up, the kick is up, and it's good. The mercy clock will begin. 1.53 to go in the third quarter. Telehoma leads Coffee County 38 to nothing on the Light Tube Sports Network.
Body Shop was voted Mayor's Choice Small Business of the Year by the Tullahoma Area Chamber of Commerce for 2016. And we work daily to earn that award from every one of our customers. We specialize in using the most current technology available, including environmentally friendly waterborne paint. We work with all insurance companies and we'll gladly help you with any insurance claims or questions you may have. Call us at 931-455-2570 or come by our new office located at 606 South Jefferson Street. Be sure to look After for the stopping right Coffee County on fourth down, Tullahoma needs two plays to go 32 yards. The touchdown, 27 yards from Ryan Scott to Brody Melton. Scott's fourth touchdown pass of the night, and he takes the big lead for the player of the game, Ryan Scott. Oh, sure has. No doubt about it. And I think now he's probably played his last series. Yep. As many cats probably have. Chadwick's kick into the end zone for the touchback. So Coffee County will begin first down and 10 at the 20. And the clock is running, Kenneth. It sure is. Only thing that stops the mercy clock is injuries, scores, and timeouts. Out of bounds does not stop it. Incomplete passes does not stop it. Number 33 trots on the field for Tullahoma. That is Bo Banks. We saw his dad, Jeff, up here earlier visiting with us. He's a sophomore, so he comes into the game for the Wildcats. As does Jalen Hill, 6'2", 175 sophomore. Coffee County runs it up the gut. Not much there. They want to get out of here as much as we do. That was Heaton. Hargrove at safety for Tullahoma. Number 80 into the game for Tullahoma, I believe that's Hoff. That's Zane Hoff, H-O-P-F. He had an interception against Franklin County in, a, in the scrim, a scrimmage earlier this season. Look at big Cam Robinson back out on the field. For oh, the that's Cats. great news. Fantastic. Shimwell to throw. Pass out in the flat intended for Osborne. Incomplete. <laughs> Hargrove sticks him at the point of contact. Well, if you read the Murphy Fair review of the Telema Wildcats, Coach Olive super high on this Telehoma sophomore, Ethan Hargrove, a hard worker, a heavy hitter, and uh, he was poised for a breakout year this year, and he's showing, he's showing that, those flashes uh, it, here in the first two games for Telehoma. Malik Grizzard is in at linebacker for the Wildcats. Coffee County, third down and eight at the 22 with five seconds left to go in the quarter. Shimwell fakes a handoff, a little draw play, and Shimwell gets the first down for Coffee County out to the 34-yard line. So a gain of 12 for Shimwell as the third quarter comes to a close. We've played three in Manchester. Tullahoma owns the pot. The Cats lead 38 to nothing on the Light Tube Sports Network. Citizens Tri-County Bank has the checking, loans, savings, and traditional banking services you want plus free internet banking and bill pay, bank your change, Visa gift card, and lots more state-of-the-art banking services. We focus on the service and services you want. So you can bank when, where, and how you want, at our offices, or from just about anywhere. Citizen Shry County Bank, the only community bank you'll ever need. Tullahoma jumped out to a seven to nothing lead on the first play of the second quarter and the Cats have not looked back. Outscoring the Red Raiders 38 to nothing in less than two quarters. Coffee County on first and 10, long pass, wide open receiver is Walker. He got behind everybody all the way down to the Tullahoma 35 yard line, a gain of 30. Well, he sure did. Tullahoma playing some substitutes now and just a blown coverage by the Left corner back on that one. Wide open, as you said. So the and luckily for Tullahoma, that didn't go for a touchdown. Receiver couldn't keep his feet. The ball seemed to be on target, and uh, he just trips himself up there on the Tullahoma 38. Longest play of the night for Coffee County, 30 yards. Red Raiders, first and 10 at the Wildcat 35. Osborne in motion. Shimwell looking for him all the way. Pass is caught. 
and then he fumbled it. Ball's picked up by Tullahoma's Malik Grizzard, and Grizzard tackled at the 35. The Cats have forced another turnover. Well, they sure have. Uh, you know, Tullahoma's defense, one of their substitutes, forces the fumble there. So, uh, great job. Another turnover for that Wildcat defense. Number 26, jarred the ball loose. That's Brock Stroop, the Tullahoma junior. So, big play there by the junior. He gets in and uh, makes a statement there with that, that tackle and forced fumble. Coffee County is in big, big trouble. Mercy clock's running, 10.30 to go. Tullahoma's second team offense takes the field. Entirely second team. Ken will try to get you some numbers here. The quarterback is Wade Collins. Collins, 5'11", 150, a junior. Collins, a little flare pass, complete. It's the same play Dixon's been running. This time it's Reagan Tomlin, and we'll get a multiple penalty flags. I think Tomlin got hit out of bounds. Yeah, he did right on the Telema sideline. So, uh, you know, Collins uh, delivers the ball, gets rid of it quick, throws a nice spiral, and, uh, you know, you and I both uh, got to see him perform against Warren County and Franklin County and uh, limited duty, and, but he did a fine job as the number two quarterback. Personal foul against Coffee County will tack 15 yards onto the end of that four-yard gain. Red Raiders a little bit aggressive. Good job by Tullahoma sideline of not getting involved there. It will be marked all the way into Coffee County territory at the 45-yard line where the Wildcats will line it up first down. Well, we see this game uh, really just take form like much of last season, you know, we got the mercy clock going early, you know, early in third quarter and lots and lots of football games last year and built depth on this team by, by allowing young guys to get in, uh, you know, with a, with a big score differential. Banks is in there, wide receiver split wide to the left. Wildcats using as much of the clock as they can. Play clocks down to 10. Good job by Parton. Hands off inside. Not much room there for Colby Tucker, 5'11", 175, sophomore. But yardage is not the issue now, Ken. Ball security running the clock. Yeah, to uh, substitute offensive linemen, see big 73 and 74 on the right side line. That's Jackson Bennett, number 73, and Mason Miller at right tackle for Tullahoma. No gain on the play. Second down and 10 cats at the Coffee County 45. Well, that's, that's one thing, Scott. When they put Collins in, they continue to run their offense. Oh, yeah. They, they sling it around. Three receivers to the left with 8-10 left to go. Tullahoma leading 38 to nothing. Hand off inside as uh, Tucker didn't get much, if any. It's third down. Well, this is Caden and Colton's little brother. So I believe Tucker is a sophomore. It's always Colby Tucker. good to see another Tucker coming through Tullahoma. They're good. Tucker boys are hard-nosed football players. They play tough. Third down and 10, Wildcats. Parton splits two receivers to the left, two to the right. And we'll just hand it to Tucker again right up the gut. Gets behind that offensive line and gets two or three yards. Doing his job, which is ball security. Grind out a two or three yards. Comes from a fine family. Tullahoma's going to go for it. Fourth down and eight at the Coffee County 43. Clock see, under seven minutes now. See if they let Parton cut one loose here. Third and seven. 640 left to go in the football game. I'll talk with Wildcat head coach John Olive down on the field after the game. A happy coach Olive. Always good to get a happy coach Olive. There's a flare pass to Jalen Hill, but it's behind the line of scrimmage and lost yardage. Oh, Hill made a very athletic catch. Reaches up with his left hand. One hand stabs that ball out of the air and, uh, you know, not, not, a, not a good game, perhaps even a loss, but he did make a nice catch on that one. So we're headed toward the finish line here. Coffee County 
will have it first down and 10 at the Red Raider 47 uh, yard line with six minutes left to go. Tullahoma getting in 72, Eli Morgan, 6'2", 240 sophomore. Miller, 6'1", 235 sophomore. Coffee County has a backup quarterback and running back in. No, that's Heaton still in for the Red Raiders, and Heaton gets about eight. Well, you know, no matter if they got subs in, certainly they want to scrub the zero off the, off the scoreboard here in these five, last five-plus minutes if they can to avert the shutout. I, I don't know how many shutouts have been in this series, but you certainly don't want to have a goose egg on that scoreboard that goes down in the historic record books. I do. <laughs> yeah. You don't Red Raider back up quarterback, oh, oh, back to throw, yeah. pass incomplete. And I'll tell you what, Woo. the backup quarterback is 17, Cole Pippinger. He's a freshman, 5'10", 175. Yeah. He got introduced to Ethan Anderson. They sure did. <laughs> Big lick by the Tullahoma Big sophomore. Lick. Clean hit. Good, nice lick right there. So it's third down and two, Red Raiders. And here's a run straight up the gut by Pippinger. And he gets all the way down to the Tullahoma 25-yard line, a gain of 20. Oh, nice run by Pippinger. We're going to be uh, dealing with him for the next three years, a yeah. quarterback for Coffee County. Gain of 20. He's quick. He sure is. And we heard about this freshman quarterback. Yeah. Thought he might be starting against us because of the injury to – uh, Coffee County starting quarterback, but he played. You know, tell almost still trying to rip the ball out on defense and get another turnover. Coffee County runs it for a gain of ten, and it is first down and ten. Red Raiders at the Tullahoma 15. Red Raiders trying to get on the board. 3:50 left to go. Tullahoma leads 38 to nothing. 58 in for the Cats. Going to have a 58. Here is. Pippinger, boy, he's, he is quick, and he dances into the end zone for the touchdown. That's Cole Pippinger for the 15-yard touchdown run. Well, the Red Raiders avoid the shutout, avoid the skunk. 3.41 left in the game. 3.41 mark of the fourth quarter. They score their first points. Coffee County will attempt the point after. With Eli Elijah McCoy, six foot 170 sophomore. McCoy's kick, low line drive is good. 341 to go. Tullahoma leads 38 to 7 on the Light Tube Sports Network. Woods Family Dentistry understands you never get a second chance to make a good first impression, and your smile is an important part of that impression. That's why they put together the most experienced, friendly, and professional staff. Add to that the most sophisticated diagnostic and treatment technology available. The result is a winning smile so powerful you could break ice with it. Visit the smile experts at Glickenwoods Family Dentistry and let your smile be the first thing people notice about you. Glickenwoods Family Dentistry, glickenwoods.com, or find them on Facebook. Well, Coffee County will kick it off to Tullahoma after scoring their first touchdown of the game. $3,700 raised here tonight, Ken, to send to Waverly uh, for disaster relief. That's impressive by these folks of Tillahoma and Manchester. No doubt about it. So that's, you know, a good thing that can come out of this rivalry right here. You know, that's uh, for a common cause, both teams. Uh, nice job, Coffee County and Tillahoma. Kickoff taken at the 10 by Joe Duncan to the 20. 25. Duncan still on his feet at the 30. Duncan out to the 35 to the 40 yard line goes Joe Duncan. Oh, run it like you mean it, Joe. <laughs> That's where the Wildcats <laughs> will start. There's a late flag on the play. I think we're going to have a something against somebody. 
Well, we've had, you know, lots of difficulties around our, you know, locally and, and worldwide, you know. So our thoughts and prayers definitely go out to those flood victims in Waverly, Tennessee, and uh, certainly for our troops, uh, our, our soldiers, Marines killed in uh, Afghanistan. So we want to pray for those, the, those Americans that are still there, and um, it's been a difficult week, no doubt about it. Well, I won't get political here on us at the end of a coffee pot football game, but what a disaster Yeah, it's in it's Afghanistan. Tough. An absolute mm. disaster. Mm. One of the worst foreign policy decisions ever made. Tullahoma first down and 10 at the Wildcat 26. Wade, Park, uh, Wade Collins is the quarterback. Wildcats will try to run out. Oh, Collins throws it over the middle, incomplete, intended out there for... Tomlin, Reagan Tomlin, it's second down. Let's see, number 14 on the field for the Wildcats. Let's get a name for that young man. That's Nathan DeLauder. He may get a snap or two at quarterback. Right now he's kind of lining up at tailback. We've had some good DeLauder. Devin, Tim. I, I think they've shifted him to quarterback right here. DeLauder moves into the quarterback mm -hmm. spot. The running back, maybe 31. Cameron Nelms, 5'8", 150, sophomore. And that will be Nelms with the carry. Nelms has stood up out over the 25 to the 27, a gain of one. Well, Tullahoma's played three quarterbacks tonight, got lots of subs in the game. Got to really like what we saw out of, out of Chris Oselton again and Ethan Hargrove. Parton and Stroop had interceptions. So that defense had uh, Cam Robinson, big Cam Robinson, Caden Bradford putting heat on the court. Lots of stars on this Wildcat defense tonight, and they scored against our, our subs. Coffee County did. Joe so, Duncan's had some big plays yeah. tonight. Mm -hmm. Keyshawn Cummins with a big touchdown catch. <coughs> As a gnat flies into the <laughs> PA and uh, the broadcaster's mouth. Oh, Wade mercy. Collins just rumbling, bumbling, stumbling his way down the field for a Wildcat. First down. May have been, I mean, that may have been DeLauder. I'm not sure yeah. if that was DeLauder or 31. Well, good quickness. So you're seeing the future quarterback for Tullahoma and 12 Wade Collins and 14 Nathan DeLauder. 2.20 left to go. Tullahoma leads 38-7. DeLauder is the quarterback. Definitely see his athleticism in these uh, last couple plays for sure. Nathaniel DeLauder hands it off to his running back straight up the middle for a couple of yards. That's a Jack Dameron, 5'9", 165 sophomore. So a lot of sophomores yeah, getting Dameron action getting, here. Getting the tote there on that one. 30, 83 into the game at wide receiver for Tullahoma. That's uh, Grant Chadwick. Second down and nine Wildcats at the Tullahoma 38. Wildcats with a couple sets of brothers on this team. 135 to go. I'll talk with John Olive here in a few minutes. Stick around for that. It's always good to win the coffee pot. DeLauder hands it off. And this is 42 again. Dameron. DiCarlo slaughter in on the offensive line, number 57 for Tullahoma. Sam Northcutt comes off the field, number 52 for the Wildcats. 48 seconds to go. We'll have a post-game recap as uh, Scott Chastain corrals winning coach John Olive here post-game. Tullahoma, a winner in the 96th coffee pot, five in a row, 31 out of the last 38. As the Cats run it for three or four yards, and that should be the last play Tullahoma has to run. So you can wrap this one in Cardinal and Black. The Tullahoma Wildcats come to Cardin Gerald Field Debut the new Jumbotron 
with a resounding, thorough, 38 to seven thumping of the Coffee County Red Raiders. Tullahoma moves to two and zero on the year. Coffee County falls to one and one. Next week, the Wildcats will be off. Next week, Coffee County will travel to Shelbyville. We'll take a break, come back with Ken's wrap up and John Olive's interview. Your final from Cardin Gerald Field. Coffee County 38, I'm Tullahoma 38, Coffee County 7. This is the Light Tube Sports it's Network. Football time in Tennessee, and nobody tackles the competition like the Russell Barnett Automotive family with six locations to serve you, certified collision center, over 1,000 new and pre owned vehicles to choose from at russellbarnett.com, hometown auto rental, limited lifetime powertrain warranty on certain units, certified pre owned units. Too many reasons to mention why I keep asking the question why buy anywhere else? So we are back post game. The Tallahassee Wildcats in the 96th coffee pot come away with a resounding 38 to 7 thumping of the Coffee County Red Raiders at Cardin Gerald Stadium. The Wildcats and Red Raiders in this rivalry kind of felt each other out in the first quarter as uh, coach uh, as a uh, Scott Shass team makes his way down the field. The, the Victorias tell them the Wildcats celebrate on the field. Their fans and parents go out with them. And Coach Olive is going to talk uh, to the team, address the team before uh, Scott Shastine has his interview with Victoria's coach, John Olive. This is Tallahoma's fifth win in a row in the series. They've won 31 out of the last 38 coffee pots. So in the first quarter, uh, no score. Both teams' defenses make key fourth down stops on the offenses. Tellama Coffee County both move the ball impressively on their first drives, but come away with no points on fourth down stops. So the first quarter ended 0-0. Zero to zero. Jackson Sheffield had some good runs and a nice 20-yard reception at the end of the first quarter to give Tellama a little energy in, in an otherwise uh, non-productive offense in the first quarter. But in the second quarter, Tellama got it cranked up as they score 21 points and go into the half with a 21 to zip lead. So uh, to start the scoring, uh, Chris Elston and Tellahoma sophomore took an 18-yard shuffle pass from quarterback Ryan Scott to give Tellahoma a 7-2 zip lead. Later on in the, in the second quarter, Owen Stroop made a big interception. And uh, so after that, Interception, Tellahoma capitalized after the Stroop interception as quarterback Ryan Scott made a beautiful pump fake and threw a 56-yard touchdown pass to Jacob Duncan to give Tellahoma a 14-zip lead in the second quarter. Tellahoma's defensive secondary strikes again as Will Parton intercepted a pass late in the second quarter. And then Tellahoma up 14-zip. They went into the two-minute offense at the 248 mark at midfield, and that drive also resulted in touchdown as Scott uh, had a shuffle pass to Keyshawn Cummings uh, for seven yards to Tellahoma went into the half with all the momentum leading seven to zip. Tellahoma enlarged that lead to 38 to zip after the third quarter as they scored 17 uh, third quarter points. Uh, Justice Chadwick kicked his first field goal of the year. He booted a 46-yarder that split the uprights at the 744 mark, giving the Wildcats a 24 to zip lead. Uh, later on at the 434 mark of the third quarter, Scott uh, threw a 36-yard dart to Keyshawn Cummings as the diesel got loose downfield, wide open. He took it into the end zone for pay dirt. Tallahoma went up 31 to zip. Uh, to, to round out the scoring for the Wildcats at the 153 mark of the third quarter, Ryan Scott threw yet another touchdown pass. This one on a slant pattern to Brody Melton, who virtually went untouched into the end zone. The big Tallahoma tied in uh, scores, scores a nice touchdown as Tallahoma built an insurmountable 38 to zip lead. Uh, so the as the running clock was in effect, Tallahoma played many substitutes. As a matter of fact, they played three quarterbacks tonight. Wade Collins uh, got in, as did uh, number 14 sophomore Nathan DeLauder in the fourth quarter. Uh, Coffee County finally scored to avert the shutout as backup quarterback Cole Pippinger had a nice run against the Tallahoma substitute defense at the 341 mark. And this is how the game ended. Their PAT was good. 
38 to 7 uh, ends it here at the Coffee Pot as Tullahoma now has 63 wins in the series to Coffee County's 31 wins, and there are two ties. So we're waiting for the post game interview uh, with Scott Shastain and winning coach John Olive as the Wildcats now go to 2 0 on the season. Uh, next week they will have a bye week, rest up. They've had two impressive wins as they beat Chevyville 20. 20- Eight to 14 last week. Uh, defense holds Coffee County to only seven points tonight out on the road. So the Wildcats are anxious to get home after the bye week next week. They will host Marshall County in a region game. Tellahoma, of course, in a new region with nine teams this year. So uh, we're going to see Marshall County, a familiar opponent, come in. And um, certainly that game will probably be Tellahoma's toughest game. But I know that uh, – this, this coaching staff who's doing an excellent job this season and these players and fans look forward to filling up Wildcat Stadium in a couple of weeks. So, you know, lots of standouts in this game. Ryan Scott played an excellent football game in his 15th start of his career. Uh, he had, I believe, four touchdowns as it ended up past it tonight. He was on target with the ball. He had three turnovers last week, zero tonight. No fumbles, no interceptions. A flawless game, really, by Ryan Scott, the Tellum was senior, I think, played his best game of his career in 15 games. Jackson Sheffield and Keyshawn Cummings uh, ran hard behind that big pancake posse. And the receivers also played well tonight. Good blocking downfield, sure-handed receivers. It was Dixon again on the screen passes. Joe Duncan hauled in another long touchdown pass uh, tonight for Tellahoma, and he played well in the passing game, caught a 56-yard pump fake there in uh, the second quarter of the game. So defensively, Tellahoma, for all intents and purposes, had a shutout until they put their subs in. And, uh, you know, lots of standout performers. Cam Robinson, 71 on the defensive line, played excellent. We had a couple, several turnovers. Uh, We had uh, two interceptions, one by Owen Stroop. Uh, in this game, and Will Parton also had an interception, and we had a uh, forced fumble caused by Brock Stroop in the fourth quarter on a nice tackle at the uh, 10-31 mark. So lots of contributors, a team effort here, a team win. This tastes good for the Tullahoma Wildcats as they win their fifth in a row in this series. So uh, Tullahoma going to take that, uh, retain the coffee pot, and uh, Tullahoma's fans, players, coaches, and we'll all be enjoying uh, coffee this week as they celebrate tomorrow morning. And sip on that coffee and enjoy this great win for the Tellama Wildcats. So I'm sure Coach Olive down on the field still addressing his players. Lots of Tellama faithful on the field along with the players. Just a complete all-around effort. Uh, you know, Tellahoma injecting young players in with this veteran uh, leadership that they have. Defensive line played really good tonight. You know, Caden Bradford was all over the quarterback. Connor Shemwell ran for his life. Caden Tucker played well at linebacker. And, again, the Telema defensive secondary played well. Coffee County had some nice passes early in the game. They've got some talented receivers, uh, especially number 10, Jalen Osborne. But after the first quarter and a half, Telahoma kind of shut down the Connor Shemwell to Jalen Osborne connection. Tellum's defense made Coffee County virtually one-dimensional in this game. They shut down the run. Uh, runs with positive yardage were tough for the Red Raiders tonight. And then the Wildcat defensive line, the front seven, just teed off on Connor Shimwell. That young man needs some Gatorade because he ran for his life uh, tonight. Uh, a game effort by the Coffee County Red Raiders. They played hard, but they just got beat by a more experienced, skillful team tonight is the Tellum Wildcats dominate the Coffee County Red Raiders here at Cardin Gerald Field. As I look across in this new scoreboard, this jumbotron out there shows the Wildcats victorious 38-7. to So Coach Olive is still addressing the team here. He should be breaking momentarily, and we'll catch Scott Shastain on the post-game interview uh, for the Wildcats. If they're breaking down the chant, looks like the team is – Huddled in prayer, and then uh, Scott Chastain will have Coach Olive. This great American rival series as we now have uh, Scott Chastain on the field with John Olive. Down on the turf at Cardin Gerald Field where the Tullahoma Wildcats 
defeat the Coffee County Red Raiders 38 to 7. Coach, total domination by your team, just a great effort. Great effort by our young men. I was proud of them. Uh, we felt like we were the better team coming in. They're a young team. Uh, and our young men did what they needed to do. We told them it would be tough sledding, though, that it, they wouldn't give us anything. And I think, uh, you know, we finally found a way to score seven and then 14, and then I thought it was big to score right there before halftime to go up 21-0. You know, we talked about the fact that the last couple of years, this team scores a lot right before halftime. And it, it, it's a great bonus to go into the locker room with that kind of lead. Yes, and you gain some momentum and everything else right there. So I'm tickled. Our, our offense is playing good. Uh, they threw a 3-3 stack at us. It was nice to have a bunch of senior linemen that you could make some adjustments, get a hat on a hat, and see if we couldn't start moving the ball. It was still tough sledding. We ended up having to throw it, and that was good to see Ryan Scott make some good throws. Perfect lead-in. Our player of the game, Ryan Scott, four touchdown passes, no turnovers. Uh, the pass to Keyshawn Cummings, thought was the best play Ryan's made since he got to Tullahoma. Kept his eyes downfield, coach, eluded that rush, found his running back. I agree with you that it was a great play by Ryan. Uh, thought that he kept his calm, stepped up in the pocket there, and made a, made a really nice throw. We thought that would be open, uh, and it was, just like it was designed. Coach, we thought Jackson Sheffield gave you a really nice little spark there in the second quarter. Tullahoma shut out for the second straight week in the first quarter. Jackson came in and gave you a spark. Jackson came in and gave us a good spark. Jackson, you know, we call them 1A and 1B. It's not really a second teamer. And I thought Jackson got a, a little bit better at, at putting the foot in the ground and making that cut and heading north and south. Uh, he's probably a little bit harder to find behind that line. So, uh, but Jackson did a great job. He also did some things well on the defensive side of the ball. I thought he was a big time spark to us. A couple of interceptions, coach, your defense continues to cause turnovers. I'm proud of the defense because we really were worried about our defense this year. And, you know, we still may struggle some against some teams, but against most teams, I think we're going to be solid. All right, you got a week off here in week three. None of us know what to do. Uh, what do you look for your football team from your football team this week? Well, what we talked about there in the huddle is not going backwards. Coach Sis pointed out that we had 52 personal records set in the weight room this week. That's on top of 31 last week. And, you know, if we come back and we work just as hard, just as focused in that weight room, then that's what we want. We want to continue to get stronger and stronger throughout the year. Uh, obviously, we got about three days of practice. Uh, Monday, we'll bring our JV back over here and bring the freshmen back over here. So that practice will be more about conditioning. Uh, but then we got to get ready for Marshall County. So that's what we'll spend Tuesday and Wednesday doing, getting ready for Marshall County. We haven't had any score from them in Shelbyville, so I have no idea how they did. But eight straight region games after the open week. Coach, you gotta you got to pace yourself and keep guys healthy. Uh, absolutely. We're not quite as deep as we were last year. And so, uh, you know, we've, ha we've had a really difficult preseason at keeping people healthy. And I'm hoping we got all the injuries out of the way and that we can finally, because we've had some really weird injuries this year. Five straight coffee pots, Coach. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. John Olive, the head coach of the victorious Tullahoma Wildcats. Tullahoma wins the 96th coffee pot, 38 to 7. For our entire crew at Light Tube and 93.9 The Duck, and for Ken Keller, I'm Scott Shastine.